I'm excited. I can't believe it. Where's my hair? Oh, I can check my hair. The back of your head. <laughs> it's the best place to see the back of your head. I love it. All right. I'm going to turn some lights on. Mute upon entry. That's something I've learned. You see the lights not working? Yeah, I just I, I, I left it flicked on. This one is working. It's oh. this switch in here. There's no switch in the corner. Mm -hmm. It's for the whole the whole thing, but those in there are not coming on. Say hey, Mike. Wonderful. I'll see you later. See ya. Okay, so up to you if, when you want to start sharing videos. It's screen sharing now. I can turn off the screen share. Mm -hmm. What's it screen sharing? Right now, this. So it's just screen sharing your screen. So where are you controlling it? Oh, right here. Oh, there. Um. So we can turn that off if you're not ready for videos. Um, or you turn it off. Just stop sharing. Oh, okay. And then when you're ready, you can just hit screen share and then screen and share. I'll leave this here. Are you using your laptop? Are you wanting to show things from your laptop? I was just going to have my, um, I wasn't going to show anything. I'm just, oh, okay. I just have this. Got it. Or I'm kind of like scrolling through, making sure I'm like forgetting anything. Yeah, that works. I was yeah. just going to say, if you wanted to pull things up on your laptop, we could like make you host of the Zoom and then you could screen share, but. Oh, yeah. Perfect. You're good. You've got this. <laughs> I'm so excited. And like, it's raining. It's like rainy, rainy. What kind of activities is she talking about that need to be doing? The phone calls. When is that beginning? Um, it changes class to class. Section is this six? Nope, seven. So the first thing we'll do is um, you ask them to report their numbers. So you'll ask them, you know, if they added their contacts, made their connections, did their notes, and previewed their homes, how many of each they did. Mm -hmm. And then we do lead generation. So, yeah, these are the first two things. And then you'll go into the. So, can I have that up here? Sure. Fine. Oh, going off the right thing. I wasn't sure if I would have one of these or if I should go off of that. Online. Yeah, it should be very similar. Is it not? I don't know. I don't have this at the beginning. But it's like an instructor's one. Yeah, well, you would think that they should tell the instructor that maybe that's why it hasn't been getting done because it's not in the instructor manual. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. It just goes right. Did you see how it just. Yeah, it just goes right into it. Yeah, well, you can do the report the numbers in the lead generation and then. Mm -hmm. Do a combo. <laughs> I don't know. We've got two on Zoom. Can you hear me? Yes. Well, I think so. Can you all hear us? Jacob, Gabrielle, Stephanie, can anyone hear us? Hi, yeah. Neil. Oh, perfect. perfect. I just missed it though. What were we all saying? Oh, we were just asking if you could hear us, making sure everything's working. Oh, all right. So, do you usually give it a little time? Yeah. There's usually a couple stragglers. Hey, 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 look at you, huh? <laughs> doing that. Right? Look at me. Yeah, doing a class. Cool. You have to be gracious. Here's my first class. You're going to be 
iTunes pulled up now so I can see the chat. So you don't have to super watch it, but it might just be a Zoom day. Perfect. Did you say it was raining? I hope that's okay. It's definitely raining where I'm at. That's fine. Hey, Hi, good morning. How are you? Hi. Good, how are you? Great. What's your name? I'm David. I'm Lauren. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Stephanie said, congrats on your first class, Lauren. Thank you, Stephanie. <laughs> All right, so we always start off with this baby on the board. So for the people on Zoom, do they just put it in the chat? Um, you can go through, since it's a small group, you can go through and ask them each individually and they can report back. Okay, well, I'll start with you, David, if you uh -huh. in person. Is this your, have you been to all the rest of the classes here? I have been to two of them. Uh -huh. Yeah, you kind of join in the middle of the day. Okay, so have, have they been doing the daily 10 board? I don't. Yeah. Have you if I have you added any contact to your database this week? Is it, is it daily or is it weekly? Yes, so you're supposed to add ten a day. Okay. Hi. Hey. How are hey. you all? What? Oh. Yeah, I, I did, but uh, most of them were not from my sphere. Uh -huh. uh, I was only of open houses. Okay. So yeah, I got some leads. Awesome. Uh, well, my name is Lauren, for anyone that has not met me. Hello to everybody on Zoom. Um, I guess I'll tell a little bit about myself as we get started, but I've only been in real estate about two and a half years. My renewal is January, and I'm a working mama with three boys um, who are almost six, four, and one. So they keep me busy. So um, I'm going to write your names on the board, and we'll do the daily tip four and go from there. Y'all are the teens together. That's right. We, we met at an open house. Yes. We That's did. awesome. But, and you go by, Clessa? Yeah. Clessa, yeah. what you like? Okay. I know you have a couple names. You said Joe? Joe. Which one do you like? Is it? Do you know what I'm All right, Joe, but that's shorter. <laughs> Is it W or J? J U A. J U A. J U A. N I T A. All right. So, David, how many contacts did you add yesterday? Uh, only yesterday, probably six. six. And then, how many connections? Like phone calls? Uh huh. No. Uh, how many notes? I've got some notes. Yeah, six notes. Six uh, notes. For each contact. And then, how many homes for you? I, I have one open house, no produce. Full contact. Just And you got some lead from that, and that's part of your. Right. Cool. How many contacts for you, Joe? Yes, buddy. Uh huh. Zero. Zero. Oh, I didn't do anything yesterday. That's my day off. That's all good. We got to rest sometimes. <laughs> so, does that mean zero connections as well? Yeah. Did zero no, I didn't do connections. That. Any notes? No, no home for you. Okay. No. no worries, no judgment. What about you, Anita? Same thing. We work at the house yesterday. Good for you for yeah. taking a day off. Yes, we really did it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I feel like I'm all about rest. Okay, um, let's do Stephanie next. Stephanie, do you want to take yourself off mute and tell me if you did your daily 10 four? Lauren, I did not do my daily 10 four. Okay, girl, you're getting ready for teaching anyways, aren't you? Yes, ma'am. You're busy, B. My sister is a teacher. Yep, she feels the pain then. <laughs> like organizing two million books. I'm like, wow, that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, what about Matthew? Yeah, I didn't do that. Any uh, ten four at all? Y'all know that we're supposed to do it, right? We'll keep each other accountable. <laughs> All right, what about Jacob? Uh, I don't, I didn't add any context to the database, but uh, I started my Facebook page. I got 34 likes, 
if that counts. It's a lot in the beginning, so kudos to you for starting something and in implementing something. So, like a oh. firefighter. In the beginning, <laughs> um, did I miss anybody? I think Gabrielle. I got everybody. Gabrielle. I am so sorry. It's so loud on this end. I've got my Roomba and then my printer going. But yes, I got a few added to my contact list, not to command, but my contact list so that I have them available in my address book kind of thing. And then I am going to be working on getting notes and things along those lines for door walking in my neighborhood today. And then um, I'm gonna see about adding a few more from my Facebook. So we're getting it slow. But we're getting there. Right. A walk in your neighborhood, and then how many contacts did you say? You just said a few, like five? Maybe 15 throughout the week, and I know that's terrible, but it is what it is. All right. Well, thank you, guys. <clears throat> By the way, um, is there anything that y'all want me to write up here that? Like y'all want to learn from this class, I want to make sure that I answer. Feel free to put in the chat, or if it comes up later, I want to make sure that I address it. Maybe this is a little, <coughs> maybe a little bit of a beginner -ish, but can you explain the what is it, ten four? Is that what you said? This? Yeah. Yes. Um, so part of like the ignite, they want you daily to do your ten four, um, meaning there's four things that you're supposed to do and ten of each thing. So 10 contacts added, meaning to your database specifically. Um, that doesn't mean it has to be a conversation. You just have to meet somebody new. I'm not, it has to be a new person. Yes. Right? So this is a new connection. So like if you're like wearing your name tag and you're at a grocery store and someone's like, oh, you're in real estate and you give them your card, like that would be a contact. And you want to try to get 10 of those a day. So um, I know that sounds like a lot, but like when you're starting, they're all about building your database and that's why they're trying to get it going in a day. Because if you actually do 10 a day throughout all of Ignite, I think it's you get 200 contacts or more in your database, which if I remember, like, actually did that and it helped a lot, like starting out. So if you just dive into that, do 10 contacts a day, and then the 10 connections is an actual back and forth. So not just texting somebody, if they don't text back, that doesn't count. But if you have a back and forth real estate conversation, then that's a connection. So you've got the 10 contacts, 10 connections, 10 notes, and I think we're encouraging handwritten notes. Mm -hmm. yep. So, I don't know if y'all can see these. I hate shopping. My sister loves shopping and she goes to dirt cheap all the time. That place stresses me out because it's not organized. <laughs> but she knows that I need cards all the time. So she'll find these um, and she knows I'm super cheap or savvy. So she'll find these for like 50 cents and then she'll just give me a ton of them. So I have like 40 boxes at home and she just keeps me stocked on cards. And I really utilize these, especially if I like go to a listing appointment or if I meet somebody new, I immediately send them a thank you and it's, it helps, it makes a difference. So 10 notes a day is what they're wanting you to do. And then I guess preview 10 homes as well, which probably could be the four hardest homes. one. Oh, four homes. Oh, okay, 10 four. Four homes a week. Four homes a week, okay. <clears throat> All right. So, so it wasn't your daily thing. It was the other ones are daily, but the homes is the weekly. Yeah, so 10, 10, 10. Every week. show. Yeah, and like, I remember like when I took Ignite, like, I mean, there's nothing wrong. This market's really crazy and their houses are going so quickly and sellers might be out of their home already. But like, I know I would try to preview homes that were like already vacant. So I wasn't kicking somebody out of their house if I didn't really have a serious buyer. But like I said, like if you need to, or you know, it doesn't hurt to craft it, so. <laughs> All right. Um, so now we would dive into scripts, right? Well, now we do the phone calls. Phone calls, okay. So now, if y'all have a list that people that you're going to call, I think we're going to spend about 20 minutes calling your database. And I know that maybe y'all haven't done that in all the classes, but I think we should go ahead and start. Yep. So start making those phone calls and let us know how they go. Yeah, it's about 9.15, so like 9.40-ish. Okay. 
come back home. So most of my uh, contacts are leads. Mm -hmm. I was trying to go through this class and uh, like get some helpful uh, scripts from the class mm -hmm. to follow with those leads. Yes. Yeah. Is it going to be better to wait after the class so I can um, probably have better scripts for that? I would encourage you just to go for it uh -huh. and take action now. Yeah. Even if it's just like a text message, I mean, you got to start somewhere. But I mean, it's so, so much better when you're actually calling. And there's scripts like on this in your book that you can use. Um, so on page nine, there's a script for renters, there's a script for newlyweds. Um, and you know why you use the scripts, y'all? So that you can get big old fat checks delivered up here oh, to you. you. <laughs> I figure that's a good incentive, you know, when there's <laughs> checks being handed over. Yes. Not one, two checks. Thank you. And enjoy. You got two checks, which means you had two closings. I had a double closing, new construction. It only took eight months. Hey, that's, <laughs> it worked out good. It works. I know. Yeah, this was the hard for me when I started to. I hate, I hate calling people, but it's so worth it. You guys, like my, um, just to encourage y'all on Zoom, my most recent listing was because I picked up the phone and called. Um, I have a buyer who wants to buy at Northridge and they were thinking about selling their home in Lantana but they only want to live in Northridge. And so they kind of were those people like, oh, we've got to find the house before we sell, which is hard in this market. So I, Northridge doesn't have a lot of movement. And so I started calling on the neighborhood and they actually changed my mind. They're my buyers who wanted to live there. They're like, oh, you know, it's kind of crazy. We're just going to wait till it calms down a little bit. But while I was calling, this one lady called me back and she was like, well, actually, unfortunately, like it's been a long time coming, but we've been needing to get separated for a while. And so sometimes, just like if I would have never called, yeah, I would have never got that listing, and I don't even know them. That's awesome. So now I'm like, I I'm call, they're I getting separated. But. Yeah, <laughs> I know, I know, I know, and I'm capped. So like, to me, that was like a very um, motivating phone call. So now I'm like, I need yeah. to do that more often. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when do you roll over? Uh, January. So you've got what six, seven months of. Yeah. Four. I capped in May. Well, the right. This is July 7th, there's 12 months in the year. July. Yeah, I was so close my first two years, I didn't cap. I like one fell through and I didn't, and next year I was so close, didn't, and then I, all my new constructions caught up with me, and so I capped really early this year finally, and then I'll enjoy it till January 1st. That's awesome. So I'm just saving yeah. everything. chairs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because one side, I mean, you could definitely put a wheelchair under the other side. So we'll just turn it to a little bit. I think that'll hold us. Yeah. And use Rebecca's office. Yeah, that works. If you can get somebody to help me, I can do it this afternoon or afternoon. Okay. I think I asked Joe to so he helped me with a table for me. <clears throat> right, Jen? Mm -hmm. If I ask real sweet, will you help me with a table? Oh. Thank you. Thanks. Good morning. I'm not wet angel. Good morning. <laughs> hey. I'll call on you two just to be a good example, you guys. Let's do this. <laughs> Dallas, this is Lauren Swanson with Keller Williams Realty. Sorry I missed you. I just wanted to make sure we connected over the phone because I know we've been texting a lot back and forth this week. Um, and I know you had your family emergency. Just So just wanted to touch base with you, see if you had any questions about your next steps. And if you connected with Kristen, 
um, I can have her reach out to you as well. Um, so she can give you some next steps on getting your pre-approval um, since your landlord already gave us the okay on potentially accepting an offer for buying the house that you're already renting. So I'm super excited for you. Um, no pressure on my end, just reach out to me when you're ready or if you have any questions and then I'll follow up with Kristen um, when talking to you. So happy to help you. Just give me a call back at 704-713-0018. Look forward to connecting with you. Hey, Bill, this is Lane Taylor from Keller Williams and Denton. How are you doing? Not much. I just got a um, notification from Jesse that you finally got your truck letter. So congratulations. Yeah, you're welcome. So next steps for us is we've got some work for you to fill out. Did you want to do that digitally or did you want to come to the office and fill it all out? Uh-huh. Three o'clock is actually perfect if you want to come up with her then. Um, well, probably for 30, 45 minutes. Uh, it's a pretty good amount of paperwork, if, but yeah, it'll be pretty quick. Um, nope, you'll want to bring your bank information. It'll ask you to set up, you know, the direct deposit um, for profit share and I think that's about it. So just make sure you have your bank information. Yes, I am from Arkansas. I, I think that's why a lot of people don't answer my phone calls. I need to get that number changed. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, wow. Yep, no, that's me. I need to get that changed. It's... Oh, definitely. Definitely. Yep, and then uh, your license number. Perfect, and we can go through everything hey, how you doing, uh, in person and we'll get you all set up and scheduled for onboarding. Oh, hi. Um, so once we get your license number and get things set off from our tech trainer, she's gonna, she'll be the one to set up your tech onboarding and then she'll send off for your name tag and your business cards. Um, I'll have to get with her, it shouldn't take too long, probably a week or two. We'll get it all sent off and it'll be pretty immediate. Or if you do, I can do it later in the day. Yes, sir. I'll see you then. Okay. Was it just Thank the one? You. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at the same email that you're getting every day and just kind of calling the agent to see if it's split bedroom and stuff like that. So I'll make them. I'm keep, um, I don't know yet. So I'm teaching a class this morning, but I'm, I'm going to call the agent just to kind of ask a few questions. And if it sounds good, I'll, I'll schedule showing later. I, I... Okay, well, we could do, I, I of course want to come over and see you. I just have a one o'clock appointment, so I could probably do like a three o'clock. Are you free around then? Okay, well, I will let you know what she says. And then if I get something scheduled, I'll just screenshot you the um, approval. Okay, y'all have a good day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for calling.
So by the way, like whenever I'm calling people, I don't know. Like everybody has their own style, but I always follow up with a text message if I get their voicemail because some people either their voicemail box is full or they just don't check their voicemail. Yeah. <laughs> but they'll like literally call me back and be like, hey, I saw you missed your call. I was like, oh, did you get your voicemail? No, I didn't listen to it. So I usually follow up with kind of what I, a summary of what I said on the voicemail on a text. So that, cause usually people are in a meeting and they're busy yeah. and they can be like, oh, I got a voicemail. And then they'll actually listen to it. And I, I made a digital card too on Haystack. It's like a free app and I'll follow up my text message with my digital card and they can click on it and it has like my email, phone, social media, everything on that digital yeah. card. So that's been kind of helpful for me too. Cool. Yeah, because I know sometimes we give cards and people just lose them, throw them away. I know. Like that, so. And we, it's like, what do I do with all these cards? I use Cam Card for the actual cards. Mm -hmm. It's another app that like takes a picture of the card mm -hmm. and then instantly puts them in your phone. But then I have to like go to my phone and edit it because I like to add like realtor or inspector on the end of whoever they are. Mm -hmm. So if I'm searching for like a cleaner, it just pops up all the numbers. Yeah. I'm kind of an organized nerd in that sense. But <laughs> how long have you had your license too? Uh, February, I think, of this year. Yeah, okay. but I didn't. I feel like I'm brand new, like because I, I was still working. Yeah. And so it was. I had no. I had, I didn't even have access to my phone at work oh, because wow. it's, it was it's a dure place. So yeah. it was like no emails or phone calls that I can return. So it was like after work, I had to do all of that. And oh, that, it was That's part of this business. Yes. So I just quit my job and at the end of May. Uh-huh. So you all do this full time now? Yes. That's awesome. Yeah. It's like scary and fun all the same. Yeah. <laughs> You know what? Yeah, mine's North Carolina, and I never did. And now it's on all my signs, and I'm like, do I really want to take it? <laughs> <laughs> You're so far in. <laughs> I know. But usually, I just like I was telling them, you know, a lot of people don't answer, and like the voicemail, and actually follow up on my voicemail with the text message saying, "Hey, this is Lauren Keller Williams," and I explain a brief summary of what I said in the voicemail. Yeah. And then I followed up with my digital business card, so they know I'm legit. Yeah. So I've just kind of found a workaround and. I'm like, oh my database. Like, I mean, I have like 1,400 people in my command. I'm like, do I really want to? <laughs> no, <laughs> that would be a pain. I know. So it's like, my bad. I didn't really, I kind of thought about it, but I just wasn't finding a lot of good numbers at the time. And Google Voice doesn't work really well with Turkish. Yeah, you need to know. Oh, yeah. Them. And then, like, we tried T Mobile and hated it and went back to Turkish. <laughs> <laughs> so like, that was like a nightmare. I had no phone for it because Ellis, like, they wouldn't unlock our phone. And so they, we can use the SIM card on my phone. And so I was literally having them. And it was a busy week. Luckily, I didn't have like a sign in the yard or anything. 
Can you imagine, like, not being able to take a phone call? That's, like, a killer. I know. I was like, wait, you don't understand what you're doing. Like, your business is having a phone. <laughs> oh, crap. This is for us. Yeah, I, I'll leave a voice now, but then I send a video text. So whether or not they want to talk to me, I'm sending them a video text. Oh, that's a good idea. It freaks some people out, but then it's like other people are really into it. So right. I heard the like video. I saw him it was kind of freaky because he did that the other day. Uh-huh. <laughs> I love it. It's, what? So if I get someone's voicemail, most uh -huh. of the time I'll like, you know, I'll leave the voicemail, but then I'll also like, hey, it's Lenny, I just missed your call. Like send them a video of me just waving and saying, give me, <laughs> send me a text or give me a call back. That is so cute. And I would say I've had more success doing that than just leaving a voicemail, but it also turns a lot of people really off. So oh, okay. <laughs> it's hit and miss, but I think it's better than for me than just leaving a voicemail. Oh, nice. I tried it. You're like, that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really into it. I said, what the experts say is working, so I'm gonna try it. I like it. It got me a call back. Yeah, so. people call me back. If not, just to be like, dude, who are you? <laughs> I think I said 9:30, right? Or did I say 9:40? Uh, you said 9:40, but for what? Um, we're doing our calls. Oh, that's hey, Brad. This is Lauren Swanson with Keller Williams Denton. How are you? I'm good. I actually have a client who's interested in y'all's listing on the Meandering Creek. It looks like it went back on the market, right? Yeah. Okay, so you said that you are deciding between two offers already, or I should go ahead and show it like y'all have it. Oh, okay. So would your seller consider in this market, would they even consider a contingent offer if I have a listing to be in the market on Wednesday? North Lake, so local, and it's in Northridge, so yeah, it's highly desirable. Northridge Estates, one acre lots. It's priced well for the square footage. It's going to be priced at six hundred thousand. It's got a pool and all that. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, yes. 
their downside. Yeah. Well, my last question is too, since you already had a round of offers in that particular area, I've been trying to educate her on what I'm seeing on my listings, and I know you can't tell me everything, but are you seeing like over 1% offers and how crazy are they? Yeah. Oh, that's what I meant. Yeah, I meant. I actually have to leave at 10 30, so okay. I'm, I've got back to back appointments until 12. Okay. Um, well, I'll be. Well, we'll be here this afternoon. Okay, yeah, if you want to come find me this afternoon, we can chat. Okay, I've got the group coaching. Yes, I'll be there too. I'll be there for group coaching. I just need like five minutes. Okay. I'll text you real fast the address if you want to look it up, but uh, it's already coming soon, and I'll have professional photos hopefully this morning. Awesome. Thank you, Brad. Have a good one. trying to get Zoom to come on in the car and it wasn't working so well along the driving trip. Oh, <laughs> <I stopped. laughs> Did you have to do your days with him for? Do you know what it is? Um, do you want like for the weekend or just for, I haven't done anything today. Um, yesterday. Yesterday I had four, I made, made five phone calls to make and I had four referrals. <clears throat> this is like Hey, I'm good, Bill. How are you? So you have five, I had contacts. five contacts and I had four referrals. Four. So mm -hmm. you just put them, yeah. Okay. And then did you have any connections? Uh, um, I had one and we'll be The onboarding will be another day. That will be scheduled <laughs> with um, Diana. So okay, like once we get you, once we get all she your stuff sent on and yeah, try to accept it, then the she's going to send off to Scott Lavori and they're going to do a bunch of back end set up stuff. And then once we have all your emails and passwords and usernames, then she'll call you in and she'll do a full rundown of all of our systems. I did not, I did on Saturday. So Saturday I did an open house. Okay. Yeah, it'll be so from today, it usually takes about three or four business days. Um, so it'll probably be by the end of the week. So she'll probably schedule your onboarding for next week. If I had to guess, closed up, they accepted their offers on Saturday night. And so, and it wasn't, yeah, two people that's perfect. Came to open house. They actually came before the open house. Yeah. So, yes, sir. I'll see you then. Yeah. All right, bye. Um, all right, we're almost 940, so y'all just finish up your phone calls that you're making and just holler on the Zoom when y'all are about done. So how long are we supposed to make the calls? Um, I think it's different with every class, but I a lot of just 20 minutes. Oh, you're fine every day. But if you're doing it, yeah, just a um, I would give yourself at least 20 minutes every day. I try to make my phone calls around nine. You have done an hour with? Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah, there's, um, there's a schedule that I kind of follow that I can share with y'all. It's helpful. But yeah, you always want to do your lead gen like in the morning because that's like your, your number one, what they call it, your one thing. That's gonna bring you business, and so later, it's like I always get in my appointments later and say, you know, like 1:30 to 5. That way, I'm doing all the important stuff in the beginning. I'm getting my 
off the break in the middle, have lunch, and then go to the office. Because it's also a point your family time as an appointment, too. Yes. Are y'all about done on Zoom? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, so real fast, I'm just gonna share with y'all kind of a success schedule that I go off of that helps me um, like get my head in the game every morning. So this one technically says, you know, 7.30, wake up, get moving earlier is better. Um, I might, it might be crazy. I actually get up every day at 5 a.m., but I've been through four pregnancies and I'm trying to lose my baby weight. So I go to the gym every morning. It helps me like, mentally feel good and physically try to get healthier. So while I'm at the gym, so this here says, get up, get moving, make coffee, and make coffee, eat breakfast, read 10 pages of a book that motivates you, inspires you, or fascinates you, something that promotes growth. So I actually do this at the gym. I'll actually do YouTube videos. So I subscribe to certain channels of things that like I want to learn. Um, especially when I was new in real estate, I would subscribe to like, you know, like people who are successful. And like, there's a ton of, Six months old realtors on YouTube that you can just learn from, and I would just do that every day. And um, especially like learning how to do the Facebook page or learning how to do certain social media, like there's a ton of um, like channels on there to teach you how to do things like that too. So, are there any particular people that you like the most that you on YouTube? On oh, YouTube, because YouTube, there are a lot. Yeah, there are. A and lot. I I watch a lot of Think Media. Have you heard of them? They kind of teach you just how to grow, like. One, how to like start a YouTube channel and like kind of grow. And I don't even have, like I just started YouTube. So I'm like, that's why I'm watching a lot of them. I only have like two videos on YouTube. I mean, I mostly do Facebook and Instagram. But Think Media is one that I do for sure. Sure. And then also on Instagram, I just like, I mean, y'all know like Christy Malou here at, at Denny. And there's like a ton of, like if you just search realtors on Instagram, I, I follow two really funny ones in California. And just like watch them and their personality on their stories and just learn from that. So that's really helpful. So okay, so back to the schedule. So something that promotes growth. Um, do a journal entry, five things that you're thankful for, go on a walk or workout, and then do your affirmations. So that's gonna be the first hour of the day. Um, 8.30, prepare for the day, um, check your emails, check your text messages, identify who identify who you'll be calling and communicating with for that day. And this time um, can also be used to read the pages of your book, like if, you, if it takes you longer to do the other stuff. I love that this is number two and not number one, because as a real estate agent, it is so tempting for me to like check my phone first. Like the first thing, oh, what do people need? So that, like that's number two. So I like that it's take care of yourself and then get ready for the day. That's pretty important in this business. So then at nine, it says begin lead generation. Um, call your sphere of influence, text your sphere of influence, reach out on social media, have, have conversations related to customer service. How are you doing? Is there anything I can do for you? How are you handling blank? Um, and then if you're new in the business, you're saying a lot of like, you're telling people that you're in the business. Um, 11 is take a break. You've earned it. If you've earned it, schedule appointments for later in the day. You can watch YouTube at this time. You can catch up on your latest interest, answer emails, voicemails, 11.30, have lunch, and then do your afternoon appointments. 12.30, work on a structure for your business. And then 1 to 1 30 to 5 is when I schedule my appointments, meeting Jones, closings. Um, so that just kind of gives you an idea. Every agent is different, but this is kind of, if it's not on your calendar, it doesn't happen, right? So it's really good to follow schedule. Do you block calendar? Huh? Do you block, block calendar? I do the one on, on iPhone. But like, you like block out times. Oh, time blocking? Yeah, time blocking. Yeah. Yes. yes. So like every day I have like repeating, like I'll put my nuts for an example. And some people like, um, Rebecca Douglas said she uses, what was that? Evernote? Evernote, yeah. Because mm -hmm. I kind of do the thing that she was trying to get away from, mm -hmm. which is like putting everything on your calendar. Yeah. <laughs> You know, you get kind of crazy, but um, so today I have teaching night with the buyer. <laughs> and before that, I had workout and quiet time, um, scripture, because that's important to me. 
um, calling on a neighborhood later, a specific neighborhood in the States, and I have that time blocked, and then I have a 1 p.m. meeting, and then maybe a work at class at 7 if I'm not tired. <laughs> my friend wants me to drive. Like, all that's on my calendar, and I actually need to, to add showing a home at 3. So, this, I just use the, the iPhone, and this things with my husband, so he yeah, can see. Yeah, I did not have like, to do that, too, because... Yeah, because it's crazy with kids. Like, I'm like, you need to know where I am. Mm -hmm. Everyone's almost like, hey, touch your face. Where, where are you? You're picking up the kids today. Make sure your calendar's right. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so let's dive in. Okay, so are y'all all have this book? Okay, so page 10, does it say get your head in the game? Okay. I won't be like, I won't read like page from page, but just a as I see things that are important, I'm just going to kind of talk about that. So, finding the buyer is simple. It's not hard to find buyers to work with. They visit open houses. They look for properties online. They look through your KW app. Buyers are everywhere, essentially raising their hand and saying, work with me. I really like that they said the app. So, does everybody have the app downloaded? That's like the first thing I share with people. Because even if they're not a serious buyer, they can get on there and just browse. Like, my mom literally looks for properties in, like, Florida. <laughs> like, just for fun. And like they're always seeing your name and they're using your app and over time like in, when i send it to them i say create an account select me as an agent contact and then start browsing because then i can actually see that they're hard properties whereas if they don't create an account you don't really know what they're doing so that's kind of important um servicing buyers is inexpensive buyers are more time consuming than costly that's really true. Um, apart from the gas you put in your car, as you show homes, expenses are low. So you do have more expenses with listings. Um, with buyers, I think the biggest thing is just educating them from the beginning um, in the buyer's consults about like all the steps. So I personally know this right off and start showing buyers. I have a buyer consult first and walk through everything with them. Um, are y'all familiar with designs and command? Plurium. So in command, they have the design tab, and it's literally like a plug and play for buyer consultations and listing consultations. And so I printed an example of what I would give my buyers, and I was just gonna kind of like help see it. So you can just pass that around. But I think this is, I know it's like a lot of people skip this step, but I think it's really important because um, if you don't set them up for success, especially in this market, because homes are going so quickly that uh, they're just gonna be mad at you. If you don't like, if they're gonna be mad at you if you don't lay down a foundation of like, this is what's happening, this is what, this is how we're gonna have to structure our offer and all of that. So we're gonna talk about that maybe. Um, earning with buyers is quick. If you do it right in a great buyer transaction, you can help that person find a home and write an offer in one day. So that's really true. Working effect, efficiently with buyers is your key to generating income quickly. And then you can see the funnel so you have all your leads, which you convert to appointments, which you convert to agreements, and then you get contracts, and then you get paid. Like that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that was really nice. <laughs> so, and, and like, you know, you always wanna be working on your pipeline too, because it's like, as soon as we don't have the leads and the appointments, like we're not gonna have the future business. Like I just happened to have a few paychecks in one day, but I didn't have any closings in January and February. Like for me this year, all my business was like May, June, July. And if I don't start lead generating, I won't have any closings at the end of the year. So you always got it. And I've been slacking on that because I've been busy. So I haven't been lead generating like I should to be keeping it up, essentially. So just gotta remember that. Um, so how do y'all qualify your, your buyers? What do you think is involved in qualifying your buyer? You speak to a lender? Do yeah. you like put them in contact with one of your lenders that you know? Yes, and do y'all typically refer three? Yeah. Okay, good. That's super good. So, I mean, I definitely have my people that I want to work with, but I always refer them to lenders as part of qualifying them. So I never run off and like just show them homes, you know. Oh, oh yeah, because you're talking about just like send them to one specific one. Yeah, no. yeah. Okay, yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, do so. you, sorry, question. Yeah. Um, the, the, you know, like the, the app, the KW app that we have, mm -hmm. where they can look at houses on their own if they want to, do you ever send them that app just so they can see what they, like what's around the area before they get pre-qualified if they're really interested in kind of seeing the market or do you try and wait and not show them that until afterwards? 
No, I send them that that app like the first time okay. that we meet. Like if we met and had a conversation, I'll be like, hey, this is my digital presence card. This is my app. Go ahead and start browsing. But then this is the steps we need to take in order so you can go through these houses. Okay. Yeah. Because I, I always just tell them like, you know, I'm setting you up for failure, like wasting your time. If I'm just ready, showing you houses. I mean, because I need the pre pre yeah. approval to even submit with the offer anyways. Mm -hmm. So you can just say it like that. I mean, they're not going to be mad at you if you're safe back. Yeah. <laughs> okay, perfect. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, so the NAR stats say 88% of buyers purchased their home through a real estate agent, 40% of buyers found their agent through a referral, 12% used an agent they had used in the past, and 9% um, from most open house. So it shows you that most buyers do want to work with an agent. Okay, so there. You said I can screen share, right? Yeah. I play this video. I'm motivated. How do I go to it? I'm motivated. And then how do I screen share? So you'll go back to Zoom. And then um, there's a little green button right here at the bottom. <coughs> and then just hit screen share. Okay. You're good. And then how do I know they can hear it? Um, they, they'll be able to hear it. If we can hear it, they can hear it. Okay. So this is a little video called Find the Motivated. Y'all just tell me if you can't hear it on Zoom. Hi, I'm Jennifer Pollock, and I'd like to share tips on how to find the motivated. What do I mean by find the motivated? Turning a warm lead into a closed client. The first tip is when you find someone, you want to ask for the business. Let's say you're at a party and your friend is pregnant. You can always say, hey, it looks like you need a bigger house, or you're out about and you see this big, beautiful diamond ring and not the pearl wedding ring. You can say, hey, it looks like you just got engaged. Congratulations. When are you buying your next house? And I always ask, when are you ready to buy? When are you looking to move into your new house? What are those underlying tips of motivation that will tip you off to having a client that's ready to do business now versus uh, a year from now? Tip number two, ask for the appointment. Have a calendar or your smartphone ready to say, I have availability tomorrow at two or the next day at four. Which one would work for you? Book the appointment when you meet someone who's ready to do business. Tip number three, so now you've got the appointment, you wanna pre-qualify that appointment by using scripts. Ask questions such as, have you met with the lender that I referred you to the other day? To make sure that they have their price range in mind when they're meeting with you to buy a home and that you know they're able to sell a home or that they're motivated by a desire to have another outcome. Like maybe they're relocating or they're downsizing their home. There has to be some motivation level to continue forward with the appointment. Tip number four, use embedded commands. When you get in front of the people face-to-face -face at your appointment, you wanna be talking embedded command language, such as when you're comfortable and confident that I can sell your home, then we'll sign the contract tonight. If you're using that language throughout your hour or half an hour appointment, they'll be more comfortable when they get to the end and they'll sign that contract and then you can move forward. The last step is you sign them up and now it's your goal to get a referral when you're in conversation with them, on the phone, in the car, at the closing, use questions. Who else do you know that's looking to buy a home, sell a house, or invest in real estate that I can call today? If you keep saying this throughout the process, you'll find yourself turning more of your current clients into referral business that will generate lots of easy sales for you. So go out there and find the motivated and have a great day. Right next to the green, it says stop share. It's a little stop sign. Oh. Or I guess it's just a square. So I actually do this a lot on social media, um, finding the motivated. I'll, if you do like Facebook ads, for example, or even if you just like do an open house and do like Facebook lives, people who are looking will like start commenting. Or you can also pay attention to like who can you be engaged on, like out of your friends on social media. And you don't even have to make it real estate related. You can just like send them a card and be like, congratulations on your new 
like, let me know if you ever need anything. And then like, they go to your Facebook page and they see you're in real estate. And then you just kind of like, you, you can actually, the really cool thing about Facebook is you can, I'm not sure how you, like you can favorite people. And so you can like tell Facebook kind of like who you want to pop in your feed. Does that make sense? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Like close friends, something yeah. like that? Like anybody, like, yeah, whatever your friends are, like there's certain friends that I want, because Facebook's kind of lame, like in the fact that it doesn't put your stuff in front of all your friends. So like on Facebook, like I might have 1,500 friends on Facebook, but those 1,500 people aren't seeing my stuff. Okay. Because Facebook likes people who spend money. So like they're gonna be like putting the ads in front of people. But that's why I tell Facebook, like I want, these, these are my favorite 20 people that I want in my feed. And so like if they're like, needs that I leave future potential buyers that I'm nurturing, I want to make sure that they're, that I'm commenting on this stuff. Oh, if that, that makes sense. Yeah. So just watch a YouTube video if you don't know what I'm talking about, but it's just, that's helped me a lot. So this little ways to creative, creatively stalk people, <laughs> <laughs> I guess, but that's good. Um, so yeah, so did y'all have any questions about that? Unmotivated, okay. Um, So you want to be the market expert, professional real estate agent that your buyers can rely on having local market, market statistics at your fingerprints. Your buyers will need your experience in order to make informed decisions to make an offer and negotiate. Keep in mind statistics updated on a monthly, weekly, or even daily basis. It's your job to know these numbers, list price, sales ratios, and you can find these in MLS. So like you can go to statistics and like, and also I like to daily check like what, um, the monthly inventory is and so you know you know if people ask is it a buyer's market or a seller's market like you want to be updated with those numbers like all the time and it's changing like daily so i just use that i'm in the mlm all the time but uh, um average days on market um, are different with different price price ranges um, that's something that I actually use a lot at like a listing appointment because you want to set that expectation up at like a certain price point. Like this may not sell day one, like you're a seven hundred thousand dollar house. So look at what the days on market are. So these are little um, important things to point out to people. Um, another one is number of homes on the market in different price ranges, and number four is price trends. So those are good ones they have to take away. Oh, by the way. Since we're at like at 10, at 10 o'clock, we'll take a, a break since this is a long class. If y'all need to go to the bathroom or anything, I don't want to be talking too long and not give y'all a break. Um, so where can you find your local market statistics? Depending on the type of data, it could be online, your local title company. This is a really, um, y'all, have y'all started building relationships with like title companies and lenders? If you haven't, I would totally reach out to them because they can be like Matt at Freedom Title. He sends me like foreclosure lists because I'm just curious. And um, he gives me uh, the Palm Palm One agent app. Y'all, have y'all downloaded that? What's it called? Palm One. Let me make sure. Like palm with your hand? Yeah. Let me make sure it's on the right hand. Palm Agent One, I think. Yeah, thank you. Palm Agent One, yeah. Write that down if you don't have it downloaded. Cause there's like a free version um, and he'll literally walk you through it. Like if you want to have his name with him, his name is Matt Kern at Freedom Title. And uh, I have his number if anyone doesn't have it and wants it on Zoom as well, but it's super helpful. What, is, what does it do? Palm Agent One, so it does a lot of things. So I do all my net sheets on here for my clients. I, it's literally plug and play. So you type in an address, it pulls the tax and it even tells you the guesstimated payoff. So I know that's a bad example because we're talking about buyers, <laughs> but you can do lots of things you can do. Um, so there's buyer net sheets, there's seller net sheets. And um, I have the premium version, which is only like $10 a year. And you can do infographics. Um, so these are ways to kind of find the motivated because you can post stuff on your social media that, um, you know, it's like different, they even have videos and stuff. So this is really helpful. So yeah, definitely download that if y'all haven't. I'm kind of a nerd. In my phone, I have a folder that says real estate, and then I put all my real estate ads in there. <laughs> so you can have them all. But that's one that I use a lot. Um, I use Forewarn. Does everyone have Forewarn? 
Yeah, it's the one where you, uh, you like can see if someone like their or if they beat them. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And like, and that one's like makes me feel really comfortable, especially if I don't know someone. If I'm going on a listing appointment, typically if it's a showing, I don't know someone. I'll try, I'll try to take someone with me or my husband. Like, we have to use common sense with that. But also too, um, it's a good way to get phone numbers sometimes. Like, we're definitely not supposed to use it for that way. Um, but it's like if you don't know, if you you can use Remind first because all the phone numbers are in Remind. What do you call? Remind. Mm -hmm. So like when you log into Metris, you know how there's the matrix. And there's a bunch of other boxes. Yeah. Remind is one of those that you can click on. Okay. And it will give you owner information, including emails and phone numbers. Oh, you know, that's awesome. Yeah. So that's when you realize Remind. Um, if something's not accurate on there, I'll forewarn them. And then sometimes that gives you more options. But you really, you really shouldn't do that more than four times a day. Because <laughs> I'm pretty sure KW wants us to use it for safety reasons. We don't want anyone to get in trouble. Um, Did everyone get to see that little, oh, you're still there. Oh, I'm gonna get you yeah, out. yeah, sorry. <laughs> how much of that did you have to create? How much of it was in the template? It was all, all in the template. I love it. It's just so Wait, pretty. really? This was a command template? Mm -hmm. What? Yep, if you go to designs, they're like, that's what I love. I mean, my favorite thing about Keller Williams is technology. <laughs> and I really leverage the technology. So everything from putting people on smart plans in your database to going to the design center, like that's free. The buyer's consultation's in there. You literally just pick the pages that you want. Like if there's one for a listing as well. Uh -huh. So you can do your comps and you can literally pull your comps from KWLS. So yeah. And you just personalize it. So like in my listing one, I actually, I put like my little awards like you know, 2019 rookie of the year, and then I'll put like, you know, May and June, million dollar month club, or just little things that help me stand out. Okay. And then I'll put a bio about me and my family. And okay, nice. So, yeah. I mean, a lot of agents aren't doing that, so that's what helps you stand out yeah. as a Keller Williams agent, so definitely utilize it. Okay. I did not know this was a, I was like, wow, she put a lot of work in that. <laughs> oh yeah, I hired someone to create the whole note. <laughs> <laughs> Keller Williams, yeah. yeah. Yeah, do all of y'all on Zoom know where to find those templates and commands and designs? Wow, I am. Oh, what is the for, uh, forewarn or? Uh... Forewarn? Yeah. So, forewarn is an app. So if you, I think you would get with Diana to, if you don't um, already have, because everybody at Keller Williams has a login for forewarn. Um, but if you go to the app store, um, it's, it looks like a shield. It's like, I wish I could show y'all. I can't really show you, but it's called Forewarn, F-O-R-E-W-A-R-N. And it's basically like a safety check. You can search by phone number and you can search by name and area, like to pull somebody up. And it pulls up recent addresses, recent phone numbers, if they have a criminal history. It's just a kind of like a precaution so you know who you're meeting with. But um, okay. if you set up, get with Diana and get that set up because we all have a login and it's free to us as Keller Williams agents. All right, cool. Thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> so I'm on page 21. They have a buyer lead sheet here, which is a good way to qualify your buyers. Like if you're on a phone call or if you're calling people, um, this helps me stay organized. You can just literally on the phone get their name, address, street address. So kind of, because I know like when I started, I was nervous on the phone and I wouldn't know what to ask. So this is very helpful to have a template. And I think you can find these in, you think PW Connect? Oh, I'm sorry, I was looking at your thing. What oh, are you you're totally fine. Um, the buyer lead sheet? Um, or do we have like a Google Drive? Yeah, it should all be in on command. In command, okay. Um, just the buyer lead sheet, yeah. is it just like a way to keep track of your leads or yeah well it's on page 21 do you see and i don't use this all the time but it's just like if you're talking to someone new and you don't know anything about them it just kind of like prompts your brain on like what questions to ask do you usually include something like that in your like uh, guide and no because by then if i have the appointment i have most of their stuff or at least i have most of one person's like when I went on my listing appointment the other day, I only had the wife's information. So while I was there, I was like, oh yeah, what's your what's your phone number, John? And what's your email? So I had everything. Okay. 
Um, so do yeah. you usually ask all these questions on your first call whenever you're talking to them about like um, if they're pre-approved or not and stuff like that? Or yes. Okay, so you go do you go through the list or do you just ask them like get the main information like phone number and uh, uh, depending yeah. on the person I'll go through the list. Oh, you but the list. top three that you want to ask is your phone number, your email, and are you working with an agent? Okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's just sometimes I I like forget to ask all these questions and it kind of sucks because then I'm like 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 a lot into it i'm like oh by the way so yeah but okay i need to get because people <laughs> you think it'd be common sense that people don't know that they're only supposed to work with one agent so you don't yeah. want to waste your time if someone's already working with an agent make okay. sure you ask that question okay. that's all that's all part of pre-qualifying pre them to work with you oh yeah there's like a whole backside i don't go into that depth but if you wanted to you could Oh yeah, I like this rate the buyer. So um, you, I in my database, I use and command the, the tags a lot. So you can tag people like friend or buyer or seller or lead. There's like the lead checkbox. So when I'm doing my lead generation, I just click on filters lead and it'll just pop up my leads. So I know like who to call. Um, and you can, this says A buyer, B buyer, C buyer. So you could technically use the tags to do this is the A buyer, this is the B buyer, this is the C buyer or some people have their own spreadsheets, just knowing like who to call. Because it's overwhelming when you have 30 leads, like what's gonna make me money today, calling my A buyers or calling my C buyers? Let's call my A buyers. Okay. We can follow up with the C buyers later. They're not very approved. <laughs> <laughs> How often do you follow up with like, say you have a, a, a call a buyer or a buyer calls you and they're thinking about getting pre-approved but they don't seem like they have a rush. Like, do you follow up weekly, every two weeks? Like, do you have a system by like, okay, this buyer seems really, really, um, like, I guess th this goes into play in that, but if you don't know exactly when, say they're just like, I want to get pre-approved, but they don't give you like, okay, I have to do it by this way, you know? Mm -hmm. How often do you usually, what's your rule? You know? um, if it's a hot lead, like if I got from oh. open house, like there's a smart plan that's just to follow up with them daily for seven days, mm -hmm. um, because they're, it's like kind of a smart plan where they're, they're you're, who that who that you're gonna think of, and like okay. you can even use Trulio to set up automated text messages. I've never been good enough to do that yet, but there's yeah. a lot of people who do that, and it's like super cheap, and you can set that up. But I try to do at least weekly. Okay. Um, if you don't like, there's you know how you said like they're not ready, mm -hmm. like oh they're not that serious, like they're not buying in six years. Like I mean I've actually had people who I thought for sure were like in my pipeline and like bought a new construction house because I forgot to tell them. That you need an agent for new construction and i didn't follow up with them for four months and their six month timeline turned into three months and they bought a house without me so you don't want to learn the hard way so okay. there's yeah. never really too much follow-up okay <laughs> got it thank you <laughs> yeah explain the benefits okay so here's a script script for you um, on page 24 for explaining the benefits of the pre-approval. So Mr. and Mrs. Buyer, it's important that you're pre-approved for a loan before you begin your home search. Pre-approval is really just the lender's determination of how much money you'll be eligible to borrow. You'll know exactly what price range you can afford. When you find the home you love, you'll actually be able to take action quickly. Sellers will more likely accept an offer from a pre-approved buyer. Really, that should just say sellers will only accept an offer from a pre-approved buyer. Um, and finally, you can see if there are any error, errors on your credit report that can resolve them right away. So um, I always tell people um, when I'm telling them to get pre-approved, like they're like, oh, I'm working on my credit or I got all this stuff that I'm working on. I tell them to go ahead and just apply with the lender anyways because it is a ding on their credit, but it gives them a list of what to work on because they don't know what they need to do unless until the lender actually pulls it anyways. So that's kind of what I do. I'm just honest with them, like, yeah, it's going to be new, but you'll know what to work on. <laughs> you'll know you have unpaid student loans. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then would you like to have one of my lenders call you or can I help you? When is the best time? Um, I do actually lean towards getting the lender to call them because sometimes people will say, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll do it. And then they never go. So if you can get them to be like, yeah, that's okay, then have your lender reach out to them. That's always better. Can you say that part again? You, you, can you say that part again? about having the lender reach out to them. So when I'm on, when I'm telling my person, whether it's on the phone or in the buyer's consultation about getting pre-approved and I'm using a script of this sort, mm -hmm. I ask them the question, can, do you want to reach out to my lenders or can I have the lender reach out to you? 
And do I, you have all three of your lenders, or you just do you just pick one and have that one? I usually just pick one. Okay. Yeah, I'll send them all three, but I'll, okay. if they agree to that, I'll pick one. Because you don't want to, you don't want your lenders to know that you're shopping, <laughs> that, you're, that your clients are potentially shopping, and that could hurt their feelings. So I'll usually just have one. But at least I send them three, and then I can encourage them to do their own homework and have all three. But I mean, it's really up to you. You can have all three. I didn't know that we could like do that. I thought we had to let them pick which one, but if we can have one of them contact mm -hmm. them. But that was a better idea. I mean, and you could have all three. Because I like that idea better, but I didn't think we could do that. I mean, I don't think it's against the rules. No, the lenders, you can have the lenders reach out. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm a take action person and get it done person. And if people aren't doing it, my that's my thing. I'm like, well, crap, I'd rather just, I know the one that will contact them like every day. And yeah. So. And you know, from your relationships, like who's actually a good at follow up. Like I've got some great lenders, but then I have some that aren't so good at follow up. Like I have to do a lot of hand holding, just not just with my clients, but with my, sometimes my lenders too, like, cause they have a lot of business. And you know, like they're maybe just as bad at following up as we are as following up, following mm -hmm. up like this one's not, you know, ready to yeah. be pre approved yet. So I have to tell them like, hey, have you followed up with Dallas? Or hey, have you followed up with this person? I just like to make sure as the magic words are pre approved. Yeah. This might happen later on in the process. We might talk about this later. But um closer to closing, uh, have you ever had like clients ask you for uh like referrals when it comes to, like contractors or people if they want to make um uh, like renovations to their house. Have you had that happen? Because I was thinking, like for example, my parents they have they have a lot of contacts when it comes to contractors. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking of making like a spreadsheet with maybe some good contacts that they could use in the future and like laminating it so that they can have it. Mm -hmm. um, but is that allowed? Like, do I yeah. have to have like a certain amount of contractors for like like does it have to be like three plumbers, like three electricians, or is it okay if I have like one or two of one and then like I would say at least two or three. At least for, three. to protect yourself. Like don't okay. always be recommending one in case something ever goes wrong. Okay. But that was one of my what did I do with my phone? Oh. Um there was an app that I used, I think it was like um, Homekeeper. Have y'all heard of Homekeeper? <laughs> so Homekeeper is an app where you can actually put in your vendors and you can sign people up on your app and when they log in they can see all the people that you refer oh, yeah. i'm not super good at updating this and you have to invite the vendor with their email and they have to accept it in order to be on your list oh, okay but yeah. if y'all just want to write down homekeeper it's h-o-m-e-k-e-e-p-r and there's a pro version yeah and you got the login for that whenever um when scott LaRoy sent you that big list of usernames and passwords yes. okay so it's in that okay. yeah so I used that a lot in the beginning. Now, um, sometimes I even put make like a PDF and just mm -hmm. send it. Like I have a after the close email that I send after people buy a house and it has like everything you should potentially do after you close, like forwarding your address, changing the locks, stuff like that. Oh, and then okay. I sometimes will include this list too of like loan guys, contractors, you know, so that way they're getting a bunch of value from you even after the sale. So they don't feel like, like a transaction. Yeah, I haven't used it in a while. It's very helpful. Thank you for. Did that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Okay. I like the the after you close email idea also. Yeah, and also too on that email include your review links. Always ask for the review because people want to give you one, but they're too busy to think about it. So you've got to remind them. Do you, I, sorry, go ahead. I usually it? send like a, I have an email so like I have a t I tap everything in my email so like I'll tap it if it's a person I tap it under their name if it's a review I tap it review so I, I go to my reviews tab and I literally copy and paste and I just change their name hey so and so thank you for cool and then it has a link to my Facebook page review Zillow review and like realtor review uh -huh. and then I ask them to do at least the Facebook page one but if they have time to copy and paste it on the others and then I typically screenshot it, and then I have um, a highlight reel on my Instagram that just says reviews, and then I put them there. So, yeah. Do you do a lot of um, like email templates for say like things that you say often, like whenever you first have uh, you're, you're first talking to a client or something? Do you have like a do you have a lot of email templates or usually just? Um, I yeah, I use the, you know, the notes app. I have iPhone. So like there's the notes app that ties from your phone to your computer. I have a couple that um, I save on there or I use text shortcut too. Okay. So if you Google text shortcut, I think it's called, you can literally save 
long messages under like short little text. Like my address, for example, if someone said, what's your address? I only have to write 28 and it will send my whole address. It'll just like populate, if that makes sense. So text shortcut is something I use. I'm kind of getting on tangent, sorry. Let's take yes, our break. Yeah, it's my fault, sorry. No, you're fine, <laughs> but it's, it's past 10. So let's take our break if y'all wanna to go to the bathroom and stretch for a minute. We'll get back to it. Start getting ready for my meeting. Okay. You're doing great. Do you need anything? No. Question okay. it. If you need anything, just talk to me. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah, thanks for showing me how to screen share. Yeah. And if you need anything else, just one of us is around downstairs. So okay. perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for teaching. Oh, sorry. I need to have a party for all my exit teachers. <laughs> Do a little bash. Or margaritas involved. Yes. <laughs> of course. If I'm going to be there, it's going to be margaritas. Well, I'm on Whole30 right now, so I'm not allowed to have any sort of alcohol or sugar or carb for the next 30 days. Oh, gosh. Today's day one. So if I get really mean in mm -hmm. like four or five days, that's why. I don't mean it. I love it. I promise. Oh, I just know that I'm going through sugar withdrawals. Oh, oh. Carb withdrawals. When you're doing the designs in the in the design portion of it, do you have to download it first before you can make the changes? No. Is there a way of blowing it up to see that really tiny frame? Because I'm clicking on the plus and it's not working. Yeah, oh, the plus isn't working? Oh, you have HD. Let's see how it's going to be tiny, like right here. Just to blow up. So close this page. I think this is coming up here. I'm seeing that so small. Yeah. 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 Otherwise, I'm like, I can't see that. One big question. Mm -hmm. So we went to the phone and all that was right. Yes. Mm -hmm. So click on add read on address. Yeah, but that's yeah. Okay, scroll down. Go here. And that's your key on the oh. So you click on that and have your emails. And so this is one I use like for one of these emails if you're like whenever you're listed. I don't use it on the back end. Where where is this information is getting pulled from? It's getting pulled from like a you know, there's some agents that pay for like uh, uh, Spokio and stuff. So I'm wondering if this service pulls it from like, you know, records like that. But I mean, yeah, it's just public info. It's the auto uh, Doesn't it come with their tax information? I think so. What do you make much? I'm still going to uh, the address, right? Or 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 you can search by phone number or it could be another phone number. Uh, oh, yeah. Because okay. once you sign up, there's an option for a phone number. Yeah, and it'll let you log in and see everything. Okay, cool. He's going gonna, gonna to pull up the credit numbers. Mm -hmm. If they have a record, it shows you. Because if you pull up my husband, it shows the speaking tickets from like five years ago. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So that way, you know, if you're meeting with someone who has a past of like assault, uh -huh. maybe you don't want to bring your pepper spray or something. Uh -huh. Make a good decision. I looked up somebody that I was going to call for a referral, and he had been charged with marijuana possession less than two ounces. Wow. Yeah. And I just put that on the record. So, yeah. That's sad. Wait, I'm 
to stand up here and go forward with this option. So it should have been on your email when we first started. Oh. K -K yeah. You know that the email we got and it had all of our usernames and our uh -huh. passwords and everything? Oh. Okay. It should be on that. And I think because I just put it on my phone. I didn't put it on my I'll just follow up to see if you had an opportunity to talk to the panel and see if applications are working. I'm just making sure that they have that set up in here as well. So, I've seen other people use it, but I don't know how to use it. Yeah, it's so it's free and it's like literally automated posting on your Facebook. I'm not watching. So I have everything as a bookmark. So I just click on my bookmark and it's called Circle C I R C L E P I X Pix. P I X. And we have like I remember like Two and a half years ago, Mike Osborne helped me set mine up at midnight. And I don't remember. I know that Diana can show us, but we have a free, it's free to us. And now it looks a little bit different. So, like when you log in, it says inside real estate, it says KB Corp platform, core listing machine, core back office, core present and marketplace. But Circle Picks is actually called core listing machine now. So that's what you'll be logging into. But basically, what it does is it pulls listings from the MLS. And um, let me just log into my Facebook and show you an example. Y'all have a, a business page created, like a business page. Working on it. Uh -huh. I tie my circle picks to that. So I have something constantly posting, and it's not even real me posting. So I didn't post this. It just pulls this listing from the MLS and it says, you can make this off your home, ask me for more than so. And it posts that for me every day. Different listing. And so if I have people commenting on it, this is a good way to find buyers because they're like, oh, that's super cute. And like, it might be someone you didn't even know was looking for a house. So now you have someone on your, your lead list. So is it going to show to your friends or um, So I have to go to my business page. And then, so everyone who likes my page, I have about like maybe 650 people that like my business page. 
the piece before you see it. But if I want to, I can share it to my personal page. And so it can reach more of my friends. How do you make people like your business page? Um, I just invite them. Mm -hmm. And you could do like Facebook ads to like do videos and stuff to do that as well. But I'm obviously not on my Facebook or I have to click the button because my Facebook page has like 1400 friends, but I only have 600 friends on there. So sometimes people just don't. And also people sometimes be following you, but they didn't like it, they just follow it. So that's different than like personal followers. But this is an example of what circle takes. Posts, just post listings every day, and you can set it up to a certain price range. So if you want to post like mobile homes, you can have it only post six hundred, like three hundred thousand to six hundred thousand dollar homes in these areas, and I want to post on these days, and on that Nice, and we get this for free for uh -huh. Uh huh. Yeah. And it even says published by Quarter Listing Machine. So sometimes, and the funny thing is, people think these are my listings, but they're not. It doesn't say it's my listing. It's just a listing. A yeah, listing. Well, you know. Yeah, just a way to get by. Sorry, what, what happened? I, I'm, I'm showing them circle picks. Do you have your circle picks set up? No. So I, it's free to cut flames, and it's called Ford Listing Machine. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure we still subscribe to it because I don't pay for it, and mine's auto automated. Okay. But it's C I R C L E P I X. Well, I got a question for you that may maybe you have the answer, maybe you don't. Mm -hmm. But how is how is that different than posting it yourself personally. Um, does it give credit to the listing person or do they have to just look in there and see it's listed by somebody else? Um, they have to look in there and see. So I yeah. posted, so I posted somebody else's listing uh -huh. just to try to attract people. Uh -huh. And then that agent reached out to me and said, hey, I, we never gave you permission to post that. And, really? Uh, you know, take it down and blah 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 they would put like in the comments i think it says spam or something like that wow and uh well, they used to work here i don't know i don't remember her name but she left obviously but it says former fellow didn't yeah but yeah they they said that you at least have to like give credit to the listing like say yeah. listed by lauren mm -hmm. you know i think it does say that though when you click on it and um this only pulls from our work listing at this brokerage. Oh, okay. yeah. So, and it's, I mean, obviously, I would love for y'all to promote my listing. Yeah. So I don't understand why someone would say that. Sure. But it's cool because it's like promoting someone else's listing and helping you get a buyer. And, like, to your question of why do I do it on top of me just posting it myself, it's because I don't have time. No, I understand <laughs> that. No, I mean, I do it as well. You can do it through Facebook or you can do it through uh, Command as well, like set up the whole week. It takes yeah. like 10 minutes exactly. to set up the whole week schedule. But, yeah. Um, I mean, that's obviously. Well, Palm Agent does schedule it as well. Yeah. But I was just wondering, like, why I got in trouble for posting somebody else's list. Everyone, pay attention and pay attention. Yeah. So then, does that, what is it posted on just any social media that you want to post on? Um, yeah. So when you set it up in your thing, you'll say where you want it posting. So I have mine posting on my Facebook business page and my LinkedIn. Because I don't do anything on LinkedIn, so it just makes me look busy. Okay. So it's just a way of getting. People seeing you post, even though you're not doing it, because I don't have time with three kids and like yeah. time real estate to be posting on social media. And you can cut down time, why not? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So I just have to go to my Facebook page, business, mm -hmm. and then if it's like a good enough listing where I feel like I want to share it to my actual page, I do that too. And it just and you said that you pick a range like between yeah, I mean, six hundred thousand to like in a certain area. Yeah, yeah, certain areas. So and I just have like every day is a different area. Or what you do? It posts daily. Okay. You can set it up to be daily, weekly. Do you ever change it or do you just, you just, you can change it anytime. Okay. So like I used to have it post because you can also have it share your personal listings. Mm -hmm. And I, I used to have my personal listings to be weekly, but in this market, it looked kind of funny because like they're going under contract in like three days. So like my listing would go up again a week later. I'm like, oh crap, I didn't want it to do that. It's already under contract. So I actually have it only go one time in this market because it's going to be sold fast. Okay. So you can edit everything in there. I'll have to ask Diana. They it's, should do a class on it. Circle Picks Core. It's um yeah. When you log into Circle Picks, it's called Core Listing Machine. And if I go, and Circle Picks is through command. Is that how you do it? It's not. It's just like separate. Oh, so you just go to Circle Picks and then you put in like your PW email and it should 
Mm -hmm. like you, you create an account. And I'll have to get with Anna to make sure we still, I'm pretty sure we still got it because I haven't typed my Facebook. But yeah, you just set up an account and it's like automated social media. I can't find where to set up an account on that. It's, on Circle Fix? Yeah, it's not giving me all other kind of stuff, but it's not. Well, I don't think I'm telling y'all the right thing, but I'll get with Diana. <laughs> and we'll have to have her bring that up in like Tech Tuesday or something because it's really helpful. Just, yeah. I mean, even though it just helps me like 50 on social media because like I'm, I'm just now trying to learn TikTok and you know a few other things that I'm trying to use so I don't have time to be posting on Facebook all the time so that's kind of like my Facebook posting. Awesome. So yeah. And also for example for like TikTok um, as long as we give credit to a listing agent are we allowed to post other people's listings on there as well or is that do you know if that's like like if we go look, look at houses uh -huh. we want to post those on our TikTok and just like at the bottom, like give credit to who the listing belongs to. Like, is that allowed? Yeah, I do. I showed a house the other day and made a TikTok and said, you know, beautiful listing in North Lake, showing houses today on this beautiful sunny day. And I just always say license for Keller Williams. Okay. So if, if I'm a buyer showing, if I'm a buyer's agent showing a house, they know I'm not the listing agent. So it's kind of implied. Okay. I don't post to the person every time, but you, it's always good to ask their permission. Okay. But yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Like Stephanie even says, yes, to circle fix, so she must have her set up. Okay. You, you think it's helpful, Stephanie? Well, I see a lot of people do it, so I know a diff even different um, brokers use that system because I see them posting it and it says core listing machine. So everyone has their little automated ways. Um, all right, so back to this, get in the appointment. Now that you have pre-qualified them and determined their ability, readiness, willingness to purchase a home, it's time to close for the appointment. And I like that whole readiness, willingness, and able because I have several that are ready and willing, but they're not able. <laughs> so like I kind of have like my lead, you know, A buyer, C buyer, B buyer, and that way you know. So A buyer, get them in the car immediately, make sure they're pre-approved. B buyer, identify what needs to happen first. Um, get them on a touch, like an eight by eight touch campaign. Um, we used to set, set that up in the edge. I'm not sure what they do now, but basically eight by eight is going to be the eight touches. I think it's a month, um, but you want to be consistent in how you're reaching out to people, whether they're on a uh, newsletter or you're calling them or you're sending them, you know, their one year home anniversary or it's their birthday, like all these different ways of touching them. That's your eight by eight. Um, so basically, for a C, manage them electronically by putting them in your database, putting them on an eight by eight and then a 33 touch campaign. Keep yourself top of mind. That's the most important thing with buyers because they know, everybody knows 10 of us. So I always say that. And a lot of my friends are like scared to get their real estate license because they're like, there's so much competition, but really there's so much business. Those people aren't going forward to find it. It's just that's the hard part is the going for the finding it. Yeah. The knowing, like I keep saying, you don't know what you don't know. You don't know what you don't know. And if you don't put your off, yourself out there and people don't know you sell a So this comes from contribution and the business will literally fall in your lap if you're providing, you know, contribution. Okay. Oh, and by the way, these are all in uh, command. And uh, you can set up all your, your smart plans, your eight by eights, your, there's like, they all know how to get to that? Uh -huh. Okay. So just make sure you're setting, especially the most important one I think is the neighborhood monthly nurture. So even if people are running, I set them up on that so they can see what's going on in their neighborhood. As a buyer, they're like, oh, like this is what the average price is in my neighborhood. So they kind of like have that idea already. Um, so if you don't know how to set that up, you just literally click a button on your contacts. Mm -hmm. You click it. Um, I'll pull you it. put it as a neighborhood, is, it, is that what it's called on command? Yeah. Monthly, monthly, monthly neighborhood. neighborhood nurture. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it'll just send you like market updates from your neighborhood? It, every month it sends them the average sales price in their neighborhood and if there's any listings currently on the market they're basically getting kind of like a free homes yeah okay wow but it has pictures and stuff i actually set myself up on one what else can i see here so you click on your contact here i want to tell you how long so at the top like over here or it says smart plans, that's why you click on smart plans. 
And it's free, or do you have to pay to get them on that? It's free. Oh, it's on demand. Yeah, you just say add a smart pin, and then you pick whichever one you want to do, and then you would click monthly and then rent it. Hey, question. Mm -hmm. Let's say you met a person doing an uh, open house, and you want to assign to a neighbor. Mm -hmm. You cannot assign by zip code, right? You can. You can. You can even set them up on safe searches. So if you have the trained person to do a safe search, create safe search, and you can actually have it searched by neighborhood or by zip code. So this is neighborhood select right now, or I can search by zip code. So can you assign a neighborhood by the zip code to two person? Mm -hmm. If you put them on safe search, uh -huh. or if you use the monthly neighborhood nurture, it's just tied to their specific address. Mm -hmm. So the monthly neighborhood nurture will not work unless you have their address and their email. Okay. So it's emailing to them. And it'll just send them um, around the area. Or yeah. Your neighborhood, but if there's not a neighborhood, then it'll just make a radius. Is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. right. Well, when you put the address in, mm -hmm. like it automatically populates the neighborhood. Okay. Yeah. Is it like a, based on subdivision or? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So like for, for me, I live down the street in Summit Oaks. Uh -huh. And so I set myself up on one and it just says Summit Oaks. It actually includes the neighborhood next to me. Okay. I think it's Rangeman. So it sends me for both. Because like where my parents used to live, there wasn't a neighborhood. It was just kind of an area. Mm -hmm. So that's why I was like, when it comes to that, does it just do within like a quarter mile or something? I think so. And if you ever have like a specific question, like Diane, like y'all ever come to Tech Tuesdays? That was really helpful to me because like you can ask specific questions to her and she'll okay. like walk you through it awesome because like um especially like templates templates are really important if y'all don't have templates set up y'all use zip forms so in zip forms you can set up your templates i've got three different auto fill set up so i have my um pre-purchased ones so that this is where i would put like buyer's rep hey Dennis. i would put buyer's rep um i have everything you need before before you do, I'm gonna, let me just log in here so I can tell you everything. Like the fraud, wire fraud, and yes. groundwater, IBS. I got more brains, so I have to like actually read it off. <laughs> okay. So my templates, these are the, my templates I got set up. I got one buyer's document, buyer document template, listing document template, purchase offer template and lease template. So everything I would need for a lease, everything I would need for an offer, everything I would need for a listing, everything I would need for buyer before the offer. So I don't like to send everything. Like if I'm writing an offer, I don't want to send wire fraud and all of that mm -hmm. along. It's already enough paperwork, the yeah. contract. So I actually get um, these pre buyer templates sent out beforehand. So like maybe like after the buyer's consultation or even at the buyer's consultation, um, I'll just let them know, like, hey, I'm going to be sending you some paperwork. It's not a contract. It's just stuff we need to get out of the way. And I just like let them know that um, it's going to be a lot of paperwork later. So we want to go ahead and get this out of the way. And if I just say it's notices to you, you know, information about brokerage services, like we have to send that to protect us. Mm -hmm. So they're informed and so they know that we're with Keller Williams. Um, and then the buyer's rep, like, don't be scared to get that signed because you have to get it signed or else you technically represent the listing, like the seller. Like if you're showing a house and you don't have the buyer's rep signed, like you don't really represent that person. And so if you just tell them that, like they're gonna sign that. Yeah. So it just, it's for, for their protection. So they have representation and just let them know that it helps. What I say is it helps me honor other agents because none of us get paid till closing. And I wanna make sure that you're fully represented without me stepping on anyone else's toes. If we're not a good match down the road, let me know, but let's go ahead and get this out of the way. <laughs> That's what I like. But we can all have our own script, but I've never had an issue getting it signed. So here I've got the buyer's rep, info about brokerage services, wire fraud, inspector information, general notice to buyer and seller, information about minerals, um, for your protection, get a home inspection at their FHA, uh, groundwater map, and what is groundwater. So I sign, send all of these to them in one email and I, I actually have them pre-filled out, which is mm -hmm. cool because in your templates to save time, you can have them already filled out with like all your info and everything. That way when you're sending it, you're just like writing their name. Okay, it's the part you forgot. Yeah. So those forms are those, and you said that's in zip what? Zip forms. Zip forms and those, are those, they have blank ones and we just make them into ours. Mm -hmm. So when you log in the zip forms, you'll go to templates uh -huh. and you can set up your templates. And then um, when you're in transactions, 
you select new and it will tell you what template you want to pull from. So you'll want to set up your template first. Okay. So yeah, well, and we can go over that on Tech Tuesday and she'll help us with yeah, that. Yeah, I would bring up the forms for sure and then um, make sure that y'all have that set up because okay. that's super helpful to me. It's a time saver. <laughs> yeah, can you even do contracts without zip forms? Yeah, I mean, you could print them and do old school. Some people do that. <laughs> Some people print them and still write everything that I like it all, you know. Yeah. Like, look how organized it is. Like, I have all my people just like right here. And, and then I can it. see Christy offer docs, initial buyer docs, you know, offer. Yeah. And then the DocuSign part of it also is really cool because mm -hmm. I just did one the other day. My brother showed me the whole thing. And so I was like, oh, wow, I didn't know that it like connects yeah. to DocuSign. And then if it doesn't have like an initial, you can like add it or whatever. Yeah. So, like, this is like, the super basic stuff that you want to have set up because when it's time to do the paperwork, you'll want to have this form set up, documents set up. Have all those logins set up. Yep, Stephanie says it's a time saver too. <laughs> okay, so just wanted to make sure y'all knew about those things. So page 30, we already kind of talked about the funnel, um, and then page 31 talks about the buyer's consultation presentation, which I kind of already tossed that around, and y'all can see what I did, so we're going to skip this. Okay, I guess I kind of jumped the gun. Okay, so on page 41, there's some frequently asked questions, so I'll just go through that. Um, so some people say, how will you tell me about the newest homes available? Um, the multiple listing service website provides an up-to-date up for every home. So do y'all do y'all know how to set people up on a um, search on an MLS, like an automated search? Uh -huh. Okay, so that's what I typically do. It's in the cards, right? Hmm? You, you have the new cards? The new card? Yeah. I don't know. I've never done the card. I just add contact and do auto search. I think it's called auto search. Auto email. Auto email. Yes. Auto email. And I always tell people, by the way, up front, like when you're when you want this turned off, let me know. Don't ups, don't. I tell them ahead of time, don't ups, unsubscribe, because if they unsubscribe, then like say they're a renter and they unsubscribe. In the future, if you try to set them up on another search for when they're ready to buy, it won't let you because they unsubscribe. <laughs> So you, they have to like resubscribe on their end, and that's like a pain. So I always tell people when you want to turn it off, like just tell me and I can deactivate it because I, I ran into that one time and it's kind of annoying because then they have to figure it out and there's no way to fix it on your end if they unsubscribe from the MLS. So yeah, so the multiple, the multiple listing service, um, I constantly check the new market list so I can look out for my clients I will get you this information right away. The, this way, the most convenient for you by phone, IDX, and everything is instant. And I also like that when they're on that automated thing, you can see like the, what they're hardying. If they leave you notes, you can like, reply to the notes, like all of that. What page are you on? Sorry, it's just right. 41. Okay. Frequently asked question. Mm -hmm. So this is a common question. Will you inform me of homes from all real estate companies or just Keller Williams Realty? Um, so make sure that they know that the multiple listing service is all brokers and all agents from everywhere and it's any home that matches their criteria. So just know that they have a broad range. Let them know that from the beginning. Um, this is a good one. Can you help me find new construction homes? So a lot of the builders do put some homes in the MLS, like you'll see, like when you put people on searches, it will say like new construction, and but a lot of the new builds won't be in MLS. So what I typically do is I have new home source professional. Have y'all heard of that? Is it an app? Mm -mm. Okay. It's a website. So just write down new home source professional. There was a guy that came in here one time who told us about that when I was starting. And I use it a lot for new builds. So there's like, there's new home source like for the consumer side and then there's new home source professional where we can set up like a, a profile. And so when we look, like say, say our clients looking for new homes in Argyle, I can send them new homes from that website to their email and it has my information. Oh, okay. So it kind of makes you look like you're still the professional outside of MLS with new builds. 
So I can MLS auto search for the funeral. Yeah, and it shows you like if they're complete or incomplete or like in construction and the price ranges. So like that way, if I know someone's looking in certain areas, like that's how I find out about new communities because like unless you drive around, like what, how do we know like where they're building, you know? So that's how I find out is I just search Argyle and I'll be like, oh, there's a community coming up. And I'll ask my client, do you want to go check it out? But I'll call the builder first to make sure one that they're selling because <laughs> like some of them are on a wait list and two, do they have their model ready? Like have they even built the model? So I don't just show up to dirt because sometimes they're listed and they're like not even they're just breaking ground. Okay. So always call. But hopefully that's helpful to y'all because I, I love that site. Um, how does for sale by owner work? Homeowner, homeowners trying to sell their home without an agent representation are usually doing so in the hopes of saving listing agent commission. But most understand that they will pay for buyer agent commission. So if you see a for sale by owner and you want to take advantage of my services, let me contact the owner for you and make the appointment. Most times the homeowner will work with an agent even though their home is not listed since the agent is introducing a potential buyer to their property. So for sale by owners, um, what I do is I set myself up on a Zillow search. So if you have a Zillow account, you can set yourself up on a search for for sale by owners. And that's how I know um, about stuff that's off the MLS that I can potentially tell my buyer about. Because we have such limited inventory right now that sometimes I take my buyers to go see for sale by owners because honestly, like they're less competition because mm -hmm. <laughs> not everybody's seeing them. Um, so I haven't had any actually want a for sale by owner house because it's never like presented like they are in MLS. But you know, that's just one idea that you can do. Okay. It's and we are allowed to work with for sale by owners? Oh yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. You just have to get it in writing. Like if you want to make sure that you try to get them representation because you can't represent both and typically they're not working with an agent. So encourage them to work with an agent that they know even if it's for free. Like if it's a friend doing them a favor and if not like you have to there's a couple forms that you're supposed to get signed that basically say that they don't have representation okay. yeah so that's what i guess um can we go back through a property again once an offer is made but before we take possession so the answer to that is usually we can notify the seller and schedule a convenient time to visit the property again Immediately before closing, we will schedule final walkthrough and inspection of your new home. So the answer to that is yes. Obviously, you wouldn't want to overwhelm the seller, especially if they're still living there. Like, try to do everything in one day. Don't have, like, the roofer guy come and then your inspector come and then, like, kick the sellers out of their house multiple times. But the short answer is yes, as long as you schedule it through showing time and it's approved. Like, you can go, especially if it's vacant. Like, my mother-in-law closed on a house and we went for, like, getting measurements and a bunch of things, even after the inspection. And then on top of that, we scheduled the final walkthrough. So make sure you always are doing your final walkthrough because that protects your buyer. And you don't want to have them sign on a house that they haven't seen the day before or the morning of, especially if like a disaster happened. Does anyone think, I heard horror stories. I actually saw somebody post yesterday. They're not with Keller Williams, but I saw on their Instagram, they were like, um, investigating a potential roof leak on a final walkthrough. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's scary. That is scary, but at least he was doing the final walkthrough and at least his, he's protecting his buyer. You know, stuff happens. Um, and I always get that sign to your final walkthrough, paper sign saying that you did the final walkthrough and they got an inspection and everything's in writing. So that's my favorite thing Myra Oliver always says is documentation is better than conversation any day of the week. <laughs> So is there a paper where you can find that says like final walkthrough? Like, is it like a template on some forms as well? Or mm -hmm. Yeah, it's either on, it, actually, I think they have it in uh, kwdentonlive.com. Okay. So I know that Diana has the groundwater map there and like, I think the, the home warranty waiver and the buyer's walkthrough. And if it's not in there, it'll be in zip forms. Okay. So I actually have like a folder in my computer, uh, buyer documents folder, seller documents folder. Seller document folder would be like seller disclosure T47. Buyer documents would be like groundwater, buyer final walkthrough, stuff like that. Okay. I'll save them from zip form so I have them. And I actually print several and keep them in my car. That way, when I go, I just pull a buyer final walkthrough and have me sign it. Okay, awesome. Because I will forget that memory. 
Um, last question, once my offer is accepted, what should I do? Celebrate and focus on moving into your new home. You will want to schedule your move, pack your items, notify businesses of your address change. I will provide you with a moving checklist um, to help you remember all the details. That's a good idea to do. Um, I will also give you a good faith estimate. Um, it says HUD statement here, but it's talking about the closing disclosure, which will indicate the amount you will need to bring to closing. So um, that's kind of where you'll want to handhold your lender's hands to make sure that they're getting that CD at least three days before closing, because the law in Texas is like that they have to get it at least three days before closing or your closing can be pushed back. So, and I've had that happen many times with lenders asking for stuff last minute. And I'm like, hey, where's the CD? And we're like, oh, well, we don't have it yet. So that's why you want to like ask ahead of time that they get that, um, because that's going to tell your buyer how much they need to bring to closing and then make sure you remind them that they need to have it either in a certified check, a wire, or bring their IDs as well. So page 45 has some good scripts. Um, do y'all have anybody that y'all script practice with? Or do you ever do script practice in the morning? No, the bank group's not here. <laughs> you do it a lot in gold. I know it's not super fun, but it's helpful to get it in your head. Um, so here they have a script for asking for the business. Um, it says, all I ask in exchange for my superior customer service promise is that you agree to work with me exclus exclus exclusively does that sound fair? Okay, we can sign and shake on that. So you kind of just kind of, I put my own spin on these sometimes because sometimes they kind of feel like, you know, like if they don't feel like you and genuine, then you want it, you know, to change it up a little bit. But these are just good to have. I actually will screenshot these and save them in a folder in my phone. So if I'm ever like not sure what to say, like I can just kind of look at those scripts and then make my phone calls just as a refresher. There's a lot of good scripts in here. Closing for the buyer representation agreement on page 46 says, we call this agreement our loyalty agreement where I agree to be loyal to you and take no action detrimental to your best interest. It's reciprocal agreement that I ask you to give me your loyalty in exchange for me working nonstop to find the best home at the lowest price and the least amount of time. So that's kind of an interesting spin off what I said about me honoring other agents. So like you can tell I kind of put my own spin on what I say. But when you're getting started, these are really helpful. Um, so it says here we're supposed to do script practice. Did y'all want to do that? Particularly. <laughs> <laughs> I know I never like to do it either. Um, well, we'll skip that, but just make sure that y'all have someone that you're be doing script practice with, you know, so you can get it in your head and know what to say. Um, needs, a, needs analysis on page 49. Use the buyer needs analysis form to ask the buyer about their ideal home. This is a questionnaire about their needs, which will cap capture a precise picture of what the buyer is looking for so you can provide them exactly what they expect. Um, so on your phone call, you'll want to listen and take notes. Be specific. Um, so when I'm on the phone call, if I'm talking to a buyer, so say I'm going to set them up on one of those automated portals, this is when I would ask, um, other than price point, are you looking for a one story or two story? Are you what? Do you have specific square footage in mind? Do you, if it's a rental, do you have pets? Like all those kind of things is really important because you don't want to be sending them homes that aren't going to meet their criteria. So this just kind of gets your brain going on what to say. I actually don't limit it so much in this market because inventory is so limited. Like I actually had someone tell me the other day they only wanted a two story, but I actually didn't check that because it was only sending her five and I didn't want to click two story and then it sent her two. You know, I wanted her to have some options. So I kind of just explained that up front. Same thing with like if they're looking for like a garden tub, I don't check that on their search because not every listing agent is going to be putting that this home actually has a garden tub. You know, so it's not going to pop up, even if maybe it really happens. Does that make sense? 
don't get too specific when you're setting someone up on a search. Just make sure you tell them to look at the pictures, drive the area, you know, and then they'll actually know if they want to set up a showing or not. Um, so there's another video, buyer needs analysis. I don't know if they pulled that up for me. Let me see. Okay, I'm going to try to screen share this on Zoom so y'all can see it. Needs analysis, the systematic process of collecting information about needs, wants, and desires that is used to establish and define goals. Step two of the buyer consultation is the needs analysis. Only when you understand what is ultimately important to your customers can you deliver it. Many agents ask their clients, what do you want in a house, and stop there. They don't realize the answer to that question isn't the same as what do you need or what's important to you. Determining your customer's core wants, needs, and values is a process. Draw a line down the middle of a piece of paper and write needs on the left and wants on the right, and use it to track their needs and wants as you go through this process. At this point, you will have a clear understanding of what buyers need versus what they want, but you are not done. Now, you want to drill down and uncover their values by finding out why they need and want what they do. Use this question, what about blank is important to you? Let's see how it works. Say your buyer has told you that they want or need a large yard. You say, well, what's about a large yard that's important to you? Your buyer says, I like to garden. You ask, you like gardening. And what's important about gardening? Your buyer says, I like to spend time outdoors. It helps me relax. You ask, if you feel relaxed, well, what's important about being relaxed? Your buyer says, when I'm relaxed, I can spend more quality time with my wife. Bullseye, a large yard equals family. At this point, you have uncovered a value. You can now look for other ways it applies to your buyer. A large yard is important because it allows you to spend quality time with your wife, correct? So what else about your new home would be important to you in terms of spending more time with your wife? I feel like that would annoy me if someone was like, and what about that's important to you? And what about that's important to you? <laughs> well, you definitely have to put your own spin on it. That's yeah. right. Um, but it is true to, to do more than just the basics. Then mm -hmm. like you're looking for three bed or two bath because then you really do find out their motivation. So right now the buyer that I'm working with is selling their house and she's downsizing and it's important for her to have a split bedroom concept because her mother-in-law or her mom is going to be living with her and she wants that space you know so like if i just didn't ask those questions and was just looking for three bedrooms and i'd be showing her a bunch of houses that when we got there she'd be like oh the rooms are too close and i never knew that she was wanting a split that's something i found out in the first consultation by asking those extra questions so you just think about like and you want to ask things like especially in today like do you work from home because they're going to want a larger house they might want a three bedroom with an office like they don't always just say the things they want sometimes they're just assuming that all houses have an office or they all have split bedrooms or just like those kind of things. So, and also like the whole large yard concept, like what's a large yard? Some people think a large yard is like two acres. Some people think a large yard is like a quarter acre. So, you know, that's why, you know, kind of helps. Like if you know it equals family, then maybe you can kind of point out like, oh, this isn't a huge yard, but look what you could do. Look how you could entertain. And like, if you know, like their big whys and their motivation. Okay. I think I think that's what it's getting at. But yeah, you don't, definitely don't have to sound like you be. <laughs> definitely be yourself. Um, okay, I like this one. The script says present the needs analysis. So, Mr. and Mr. Buyer, thank you for letting me help you. My goal is to give you 10 plus customer service. To do that, I like to get a clear idea on what you're looking for in a new home. So, with your permission, I'd like to spend the next 10 to 15 minutes exploring what is right, what is the right home for you. This is what I call the 10 plus home. It may seem like a lot, but I'd rather ask 500 questions and show you the right five homes than ask you five questions and waste your time showing you 500 wrong homes. 
So I actually use that in, I don't know, I guess it got pulled from here, but I have like a, um, the thing that I showed y'all. And then I also have like an entire home buying process from beginning to end that literally goes from like this script. And then it goes for like, you need to, what an inspector is going to cost, um, what an appraisal is going to cost. And it goes through like the, literally the whole timeline in word form. So they can kind of have that. And you find that also, um, so I typed up my own. So I just know from like working with the buyer what the steps are. And they there's that little, um, did y'all see the little timeline here where it says like find an agent, find a lender. So I basically just elaborated that in like a, like a one page of like, this is what it looks like. And because a lot of the people I, I work with are first time home buyers and they don't even know what stuff costs. So I like to put in there what everything's going to cost because this doesn't really, this is just like a, like a quick little timeline. Whereas that goes into detail of like, this is what it's gonna cost you for an inspector. And this is how long a typical option period is. And the option money is the money you don't get back if you back out. Like, and then I call earnest money is your skin in the game because that's basically gonna go towards the price of your house anyways. But if we offer more, we look more serious. Like that just kind of breaks it down for them. So or should you create that yourself and when do you give it to them usually? Um, at the buyer's consultation, okay, actually, with that. well, I get them this, so I, I don't really go through this. I kind of skim through this, and this is like their take home. And then the other thing I actually walk through and kind of like, like I talk about this and then this and this. So I'm not, it's kind of like a visual for me not to forget anything. So I don't want to be like at the buyer's con consultation and forget to mention what option money is, you know? <laughs> so it just kind of helps me um, not forget anything, basically. We figured the prices for all that stuff, like how much an appraisal costs and um, talking to lenders, so I know that like this, um, an appraisal is going to be at least five hundred dollars. Is usually what I say, and an inspection is anywhere from three fifty to seven hundred, and depending on if it has a pool or not, depending on who your inspector is. So they're just kind of getting an idea because these are the upfront costs. So like there's upfront costs, and then there's costs that you have when you close, like closing costs and escrow and what to bring you clothing, but up front, they're gonna need money for inspection. They're gonna need option money and earnest money liquid. So you can write write the offer. And of course, this is after it gets accepted. But um, I just wanna make sure I'm educating them to know the difference. Because like some people might say, I wanna write an offer, but they don't have $5,000 liquid in their bank account. So don't waste your time. <laughs> make sure that they know that they're gonna to have to write a check here within two days. The contract states that you have to get it to title within by like day three. So I always try to say, get that to me like same day or the next day. So you're giving yourself time. Yeah. So And so, what do you call that paper? What do I call, call that the, that sheet that you give them? Do you make it just like a one page? Is it just like a one page document that you Right yeah. in and Mine's two pages. So I use, y'all have Google Drive mm -hmm. on Gmail. If you go to Google Drive and just go to Docs, I create a lot of documents on there. And I just make, uh, I just called it the entire home buying process from beginning to end and type, kind of typed it out on there in Google Drive. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so 52 kind of breaks it down more, like their must haves and everything. Um, you're not really going to do so much of that in this market. Like you're just like looking for a house. <laughs> And hoping that you find one that sticks, but you know, you want to, you want to hear what's important to them and write it down. So you show them that you're listening and then you kind of help them be like, okay, this is what's realistic for this market. That's kind of what I do. Because the whole, beyond those five things, what's something else you really want? Like if that's just, that's a really hard thing in this market. Like, I don't know. I'm just super honest with them. And I'm just like, I literally call the agent ahead of time. And I'm just like, okay, so like for this area, like what's our offer going to have to look like? Like 10% over asking, because I don't want to just write an offer for 10,000 and know that my clients aren't going to get it. So I make sure I do that homework ahead of time and let them know, especially in buyer's consultations, what it's going to take for certain areas to get a house. So it was crazy. Like my mother-in-law had to write 50,000 over to get a house. So this is a little wild right now. And they'll tell you, like, if you ask, like, 10% or 20% of asking, asking, they be like, yep, that's about. Yeah, so they won't tell you, like, I mean, listen, okay. it's, they're not, it's in their best interest not to divulge stuff for their seller, because if they say, like, yeah, um, 50000 over would be great, like, maybe you would write more than that. So they, they're not going to really divulge what their seller wants, but 
I'll call the ones that are already pending and just be like, what, what does it take to get an offer on here and to see what they'll share. Some share more, some, some don't. It's always worth calling. Oh, so you call the ones that are pending to see kind of like what they sold that. So that way you know mm -hmm. how much more for a different house mm -hmm. in, your, oh, in that area. Oh, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, because typically like in the area, like the best offers that you're seeing, like in Ponder, I had a buyer get under contract for only 20,000 over and they were VA. We did like a, they can't do appraisal waiver with VA, but you can do a partial appraisal kind of on the financing addendum by putting the price that you wanted to appraise that. So I basically said, you know, we're offering 20,000 over and we can't waive the appraisal because we're VA, but we do have 30,000 in the bank. And if it appraises for this, then we can come up with the rest. But we had to cap it off because we only had 30,000, we didn't have 50,000. Okay. So that was kind of how I went that offer. So yeah, did some you also, I'm sorry. Yeah. Did you also have to show them that you had the $30,000 or that the buyers had $30,000 at the end of it? Yeah, usually if you offer over asking, they're going to want you to have a partial appraisal waiver and appraisal waiver and or appraisal waiver and proof of funds. A smart listing agent is going to ask for that because, <laughs> you know, they're just taking your word for it. So I usually have people send me a screenshot or like their lender can like send me like a something that they have. Usually they can do that for me. Yes, as well. I mean, I have I had a I had a buyer and um, that was one of the things that house was that they were asking for all over asking price mm -hmm. uh, offers to be to have one of those um, waivers mm -hmm. but I mean the only thing that I sent uh, was the um, the letter the pre-qualification letter mm -hmm. but I mean that was that's why I was asking like if you actually had to send the thirty thousand dollars in the bank kind of thing I sent a screenshot because because we were VA and I wanted her to believe me because like I don't know why I mean VA is a great loan yeah and a lot of sellers just assume that FHA and VA in this market is not going to close because they're strict on certain things but this was like a house that was like 2017 it wasn't like an old house that had termites I knew that it was going to be fine going to VA and so I basically was telling her if this is a great lender I always have my lender call the listing agent to give them peace of mind because there's a lot of bad lenders out there and you stand out as a buyer's agent if you have your lender call the listing agent. So I always do that. I always include the pre-qualification and then I always include proof of funds if it's over off, over asking. Um, usually, sometimes, do y'all see that they have like instructions for offers on some? Yes. Like some, some of them will straight up tell you, you have to include it. So I think on that one it did, which is why. So just whatever you're, and I always include the letter too, you know, about that helps you stand out. Like we're the so-and-so family and this is why we love your house. <laughs> like as a listing agent, I always tell my client, don't choose the offer based on that for your protection. But as the buyer's agent, I always include that because it helps whatever you can do to have your offer stand out. Um, it's going to help. Cause I mean, you never know like what part strings it's going to pull. And like, it could be like two offers or $2,000 within each other, but this one had a letter and this one didn't. So. I just, when my clients just got, uh, they, we went under contract because of the letter. Like the lady actually told us that it was because she started crying. She used to yeah. in that house forever. And she was like, I just want this house to go to a good family. And I guess reading the letter and knowing mm -hmm. that they had cats and she had a cat, she was like, this, that's what won me over. So I know, you never know. Like, yeah. It's not always about the bottom line. And most line. people don't, are, yeah, I guess some people are like, it's the money. And I, I know. guess for her it wasn't, so like, it's yeah. great for me. And in this market, it is kind of mostly about the money, but yeah. those little things help. And you can get creative when you're writing your offers. Like, I have my buyers offer to pay for title policy, offer to pay for HOA transfer fees. Um, I've seen some crazy things where people are even offering to pay, like, the agent commission on the buy side or offering to pay taxes for the year for the sellers. <laughs> Good people are getting very creative, but um, just little, those are just little ideas you can tell. It's like, and obviously you tell your buyer to do what you're comfortable with, but these are just ways that you can sound educated on what it's gonna take to win. Because that's what I see as a listing agent. I just like, this is what I'm seeing. Do you wanna do what it takes or not? <laughs> and as a buyer's agent, um, do you usually, uh, right now that everybody's asking for a partial or a full waiver, mm -hmm. do you usually, um, oh, what's the word, like, uh, guide your clients to do a partial over a full because it's more less risk for them or do you usually go for the full waiver like what do you usually do in that circumstance right now 
with our current market? Um, whatever they're comfortable with. Okay. So like for my mother-in-law, I for the area that we were looking in, I knew that we were going to have to have a full waiver. Um, so that's just what, and I knew that they had the money in the bank and that was what was going to help us stand out because I had written three different offers with partial waivers and we weren't winning. Okay. And so it just, I, I had to learn by trial and error. Okay. But obviously you never want to put your buyer in a situation if yeah, you know they, they only yeah. have 20,000 and, and you've done the comps and you know what it will most likely appraise for. And appraisals are so weird right now. Like they're like actually appraising and they're like way over, which is crazy, but you don't want to, like you obviously want to not make the decision for your client yeah. to ask them. Yeah. Just educate them on what the partial appraisal is and, the full waiver, yeah. and what's the difference. This one's only a bridge. It's it's saying if the house appraises for this, we'll come up with this amount. This one's saying regardless of what happens, we'll pay for it. Obviously, this one's stronger. Which one do you want to do? Mm -hmm. And just let them know. Okay. I mean, it's scary, but yeah, the full waiver just scares me. <laughs> oh my God, I don't know. Yeah. How do you protect yourself if you're a buyer? Uh, because you know the market is so crazy right now that you know like my buyer she wants to go ahead and, and uh, wait her inspection period mm -hmm. um, but how do you protect yourself on it because I mean we do our job and we inform them or mm -hmm. you know we don't recommend because it's something that they have it's it's um, like um, is there right to have the house inspected before you buy it but how yeah. do you protect yourself um, always have it in writing. So the inspector in my templates on the pre documents, there's the inspector info and it, they sign either I'm going to hire an inspector or I'm not going to hire an inspector. And if they check, I don't want to hire an inspector. I get that baby sign. <laughs> and also too, there's a waiver for home warranty and there's a waiver for home inspection. So that's the waiver for home inspection. Um, and also you can check that on the final walkthrough. I did not want a home inspection. I walked the house, but I did not want a home inspection. Mm -hmm. So when uh, my mother-in-law bought, they actually waived their opt-in period and the inspection because it fell through and already had an inspection report uploaded in MLS that they were comfortable with. And I obviously advised them to get their own, but they're not first time home buyers. And they're like, oh no, we're totally fine with this. So they waived the option period and just went with that one. And I encouraged them to get the home warranty, even though home warranties aren't perfect and they still didn't want home warranty and so I had them sign the home warranty waiver and once you know it their fridge went out <laughs> and it stinks but it's like at least I had that writing like they can't be mad at me and I was like I'm so sorry and I'm like no it's fine stuff happens and you know you, at that point you just kind of show compassion you never take responsibility for something bad that happened you don't say I'm sorry because they say you did your job you got it in writing you just you just say I'm sorry that happened to you you don't say like I'm so sorry I didn't get it I didn't convince you to get it, you know, like that would be putting yourself in a situation where it was your fault and you did your job right. So sometimes stuff just happens and unfortunately we're the, the person people call when things go wrong. So, but yeah. The just, home, sorry, go for it. The home warranty, is that usually paid by the buyer or the seller? The home warranty is, so in this market, you would have either you gift it to them as an agent, but they're going to pay for it. So you're not going to ask for the seller to pay for a home warranty okay. in this market. Like, I mean, I actually want to see that as a listing agent and kind of laugh. I'm like, <laughs> why are they asking for that? Don't they know that this is not going to help us? Yeah. But so I wouldn't recommend doing that. But I mean, because there's that box in the contract where you can say we want $500 charge a home warranty, but it's not going to help you stand out if you put that there. So I would just educate your buyer up front that the sellers aren't really providing those in this market. I still think you should get one. So it's going to cost around this much and then get them the packets and then they can make the decision. So um, I chose to buy a home warranty for one of mine because they were first time home buyers and that just was my closing gift. Mm -hmm. um, but I've only done that one time. And so if you if the if the buyer doesn't want the seller to put anything towards the home warranty, do you just put it at zero mm -hmm. on the contract? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, and then in zip forms, if you space, you can type the word zero okay. because it doesn't let you type zero yeah, in zip okay. forms. Okay. So that's just a little nugget. Awesome. Yeah. Any other questions? Questions on Zoom? So the zip forms, is it kind of like a donkey sign? They're connected. Uh, They're separate. So zip forms is where you're going to be filling out the paperwork and you can pull the forms from like Track and Texas Realtors. They have all of those under forms and then you can download the forms to certain templates you fill everything out and then you'll say DocuSign and it sends everything through DocuSign and that's how you sign digitally. So they're tied together. I don't really know how that works, honestly. I just know they're tied together. Do all of y'all use the forms? Okay. 
we used to now we use Instanet. Instanet? Yeah, every agent uses. I mean, I when I started, we used Dot Loop, and I like figured it out and got really good at it, and then they switched to zip forms. <laughs> So yeah. like my second year as a realtor, I was like in here in technology class trying to loop, trying to learn zip forms. So now I finally got the hang of that. I really like templates because it saves me a lot of time setting pre-setting that up. So just can you do templates and in Insta? Yeah. yeah. The only reason we use Insta is that's because we're on a team. Uh -huh. So if like I'm on vacation, it's mm -hmm. a shared thing. So like Monica can send a contract mm -hmm. on my behalf so she can access my my clients and the documents the templates yeah and everything so it's easy for her to just go in there and send it docusign and it looks like it comes from me gotcha. and she's actually doing the work very cool so that's the only reason we switched yeah are any else you're on a team mm -hmm. right Ray, yeah Ray, it's real Ray, it's real team. Yeah. and are y'all individual or on a team uh, i'm the dean it's the, the dean team the dean uh, oh, it's, it's, it's not a local team yeah it's uh Christy is the team lead. Okay. Christy cool. Charlotte. Very cool. Are you on a team too? Not yet. Okay. Well, I'm individual. I didn't, I forgot to say that, but I thought about doing a team after my first year and I'm just like, I'm a high C on the disc analysis, which is just like super nerdy organized, I guess, and just a doer. And I want to understand everything before I do it. And I knew that if I joined a team, like, which is awesome that y'all have like contract to close and like listing coordinators. And I was like, I want to just learn everything. So I ended up just staying individual, but Unfortunately, I had to do everything on my own. <laughs> so sometimes I'm up late at night. I'm actually to the point where I'm thinking about maybe hiring a contract, we call it a PC transaction coordinator, so they can so I can kind of show the house, write the offer, and then let them take it over from there because it's a lot having kids and then like having it on your calendar and keeping up with timelines. And I do a pretty good job at it. I've never made any mistakes, you know. <laughs> but yeah, it gets busy. So that's cool that y'all have that. Are all of y'all on Zoom individual or on a team? You can just comment. I'm just curious. Individual, Stephanie Taylor. And she's like me. That's awesome. I'm on a team. What team are you on? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was muted. I'm on the Forever Home team. Oh, Forever Home team. Oh, awesome. Yep, yep. Hannah, right? Yep. Nice. Yeah, there's a lot of agents here, so I try to remember all the names, get to know people over time. Pretty cool. Awesome. Well, does anyone have any questions for me at the moment? We're like pretty good on time. We'll probably be finishing up here in the next 15, 20 minutes. I do. Um, yeah, go ahead. I know that you said something like sometimes you have uh, buyers that tell you they're not ready to buy mm -hmm. within until like you know two years or whatever. Mm -hmm. How do re you reach to them um, like or how do you like keep up like without having to say um, like I don't know like how do you do because <laughs> um, I have some and I don't know how to reach them. Yeah. Well, first of all, I make sure they're in my command database and I have them marked as a lead and I have them tagged as like buyer or future buyer. Mm -hmm. And um, I have them set up as an opportunity, even if y'all know how to set up opportunities in command. Mm -hmm. um, definitely go to tech class if you haven't learned that yet because the opportunities tab is really helpful to me. But even if someone's like a nurture, I will set them up as an opportunity because I can click on opportunities and see who is all a nurture and then like who's all active and like who's all under contract who's closing and it shows you for buyers listings and rentals so that's just i'm a visual person so that helps me look at it and be like oh i need to follow up with that person so i'll literally just click on it every once in a while and also like it's kind of old school but by my desk i have a list of people who are like leads some of them are hot some of them are not and there's like 30 people on the list so i'll just glance at it and if i see oh i haven't texted that person in like a month i'll just text them and it won't i'll just be like hey how are you doing you know what's new and then usually they'll bring up real estate if they're getting closer or sometimes I'll mention it, mm -hmm. it just depends. But I just, I just always am touching them, whether it's commenting on their social media posts, like if they just like got married or just, you know, like I said, I starred them and follow them and I just, you know, touch base with them. Mm -hmm. And also I set them up on the monthly neighborhood nurture and every once in a while I'll send birthday cards. And then if they said that they were looking in six months, I won't 
wait six months to follow up, but then I'll follow up in three. Yeah. Like, hey, how's your timeline? Do you need any? Um, do you need any market reports? Do you need any lenders or people? And then they'll usually just let me know, like, oh no, we renewed our lease, or and then I'll go and if, I'll, after they respond, I'll copy and paste what they said, and I'll put it in command as you can yeah. update it as a note of like what you did that day. So next time I go to call that person, I look at command first and see what did we talk about last time. So I don't ask the same questions. So does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. That's kind of what I do. There's not really any super structure to it, but that's how, that's how I stay organized. Mm -hmm. It's just making sure they're an opportunity. Um, I have a question. Yeah. So I, I think I missed it. I kind of was going that way to get something or something when you were talking about buyers. And I hear this comment often mm -hmm. that in this market, you're like tripping over buyers or you can, you know, run into 11 of them on the way to the stop sign. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't have that luck. Mm -hmm. like, uh, I mean, I know sellers is obviously the, the prime piece to have, mm -hmm. but I mean, I don't, I don't mind working with buyers, but I can't find buyers. So you mentioned ways to find buyers. Mm -hmm. Can you reiterate that or? Like more of how I find them? Yeah. Um, so some of them I see you doing, like, you know, because you sometimes when people post on the Facebook page, like, hey, can someone show my listing? Like I you even showed my listing that one time. Right. So that's one way of getting potential leads. I'm doing open houses because people who usually it's looky loos and open houses and neighbors, but lots of times right now in this market, actual buyers are coming in. So just making sure you have your sign in sheet and you're asking people to sign in and you're getting their info and you're following up with them because I've actually had leads from open houses turn into buyers down the road too. So that's one way for me personally, my biggest buyer lead generation is just social media. So I literally um, will post like, hey, I'll show houses or doing a live video um, at an open house and just constantly reminding people that I'm in real estate and then um, just following up with them, calling them and then eventually it will just come up. Um, yeah, I mean, that's how I've gotten everything. And, you know, I, I've kind of seen that as a uh, common, you know, thing that mm -hmm. it's referrals, referrals, referrals. You know, you obviously you help somebody buy a house, they mm -hmm. can recommend you if you did a good job. Yeah. So to anybody they know who bought a house, which is just going to compound, you know, and yeah. at some point you just going to be raking them in. But like being in the beginning stage, like I've done open houses mm -hmm. and like everybody who's walked through the door already had an agent mm -hmm. or when they signed in, they put some bogus information there because mm -hmm. they obviously know you're going to call them and they don't want you to call them. So they just put, you know, mm -hmm. a bogus number or whatever the case may be. Uh, I just haven't had any luck with open houses at yeah. all. So it's and they're, they're honestly not my favorite. Some people are really good at them and do them really well. I'm not really good at them and don't do them super well because I don't like to like spend a ton of money on the open houses but although you can have lender printers help you so like if you ever if you know a lender or a title come well usually I would ask a lender but there's always people who are willing as long as you make a relationship with somebody they're willing to help you pay for like cookies or whatever you want to have at your open house um, and I've even borrowed signs from other agents so like I didn't I was so scared to spend money in the beginning that I kind of let that hold me back I didn't do business for like my first three months and then I finally had a walk in on phone time. My first, so sign up for phone time as much as like sometimes it's only lease leads and stuff. I actually had my first walk in, walk in on phone time. And they bought a house way up in Collinsville and it was only 125,000, but it was my first, first one and they were just a walk in. And so sometimes you just gotta start somewhere. But um, I focus on my sphere. So, I mean, and everybody's different. And also you can do Facebook ads. So you can post like someone's listing with their permission right. <laughs> if you're gonna do an ad. And then just kind of try to get buyers that way because people you can set it up as such where they have to put their information in and i have all those people go directly to my command and i just follow up with them i call them facebook leads um they're slower like you're not gonna like be closing anything with them because usually they're not serious for like six to nine months but at least they're in there as a lead and you're gonna follow up so um but the reason i say social media is the best for me like my two that i literally just got paid for today um, eight month process, new construction. 
I was for fun. So it was like, remember how I told y'all about newhomesource.com? New <laughs> so I went on New Home Source, found some new communities that were up and coming in my neighborhood. I live in Denton. This one was in North Lake called Pecan Square. So it's right off 407. There's Harvest and there's Pecan Square, two new communities that have been being built for like the past year, maybe two. I think it's the past year. So anyway, they're new and they're like huge master planning communities. Well, I went there without a buyer, just uh, videotaping the model and like telling people about the community on my video and was like literally just exploring communities on my own, but like coming from contribution, letting my sphere and Facebook friends know where these new big communities were. And then um, I had a friend who was like, oh my gosh, like I love that area. And she literally <laughs> signed a contract that weekend. And I went to Austin the next day and she posted it on social media and my other friend saw it and went to go look at the community and said that I was her realtor, even though I was in Austin. She gave them my information. <laughs> and then they both signed contracts the same weekend. And it's been a really long journey, but like that was from social media. This is my biggest payday. And it was from a social media video. So I'm like really big on social media because I've learned like what works for me and what doesn't. And I'm really bad at door knocking. <laughs> so I just stick with social media because that's what I'm good at. And I can like be myself and I'm like, I make really stupid like dances on TikTok and it's all kinds of things like and people like like they just make them happy and like they just remember I'm in real estate and it's not all real estate related. Sometimes it's just me and my kids. Love this one, love. So. Some people say you door knocking, but I know in my subdivision alone, people hate hate people come knocking on their doors. I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah, really. Like I only do it for like open houses. I mean, like, I mean, if I have a listing and I'm having an open house, <laughs> yeah. and a lot of them have the no so listing. My neighborhood has the no so listing. Class. Ours do too, and like they still they ignore it, and then they get on Facebook and they're like, "Yeah, this person's going around the neighborhood. You don't want to talk to them." <laughs> I mean, they <laughs> like blast you. You gotta, you have to learn to brush that off them because that happened to me. Like when I first started, I had a listing in Kingsley um, uh, Trails, like right over here that new construction across from where I live in Summit Oaks, and I was knocking on doors, inviting people to my open house for my listing, and someone did that. Someone blasted me, and at the time, our team leader, Kevin, I was like, why did this happen? Like, you told me to do this, and like, I'm getting like hate about for it, and he was just like, you gotta learn to ignore the haters. Yeah, because yeah, I mean, you're gonna get so many no's, and so many people that are just rude, or not ready, or like, why are you calling me? How'd you come my number? And you just have to like, exactly. keep going until you get the yes. Cause I even have people on social media that um, you think are your friends and they'll like comment negatively like, oh, you like Cardi B? Like, no, I don't like Cardi B, it's like the song. <laughs> I'm just like, I mean, everyone's gonna say, so, like he messaged me that. Uh -huh. And it just happened to be like someone from church and like, I guess he didn't agree with the song that I chose or whatever, like he totally missed the whole point of my video clearly. So you just can't, you just gotta do the little response but never get like combative with people, just be like, you know, give your little reason why you did it, but you don't have to explain yourself to everybody. Just be yourself and, you know, if they're not going to make money with you, go make money with someone else. <laughs> like for me, I, for example, like I thought I just made like a DF, like a Keller Williams uh, Realty Instagram and I'm not a pushy person. Like I, I'm very outgoing, but not pushy. Like, hey, do this yeah. with me. So what I did is I just posted it on my personal. And was like, if y'all want to follow me along on this journey, like, you can and yeah. that worked for me like i got a good amount of followers on there and so that's why i was like oh that's great but you know for me it's hard to like jump into that to be like oh hey i'm out here go yeah. once you do it it's kind of nice being like oh people do support you <laughs> they do and when the people start liking your stuff that's a good way to lead generate so like if you make a video because like not everybody will comment for example but they'll like it you'll click on the list of people who are liking it message those people hey how are you doing like don't even make it real estate related just be like hey thanks for liking my video like what's new with you and like you have a whole list of people to lead generate that day just yeah. people that commented on your video so like you can get creative like that and those kind of become your like i don't know your tribe like this is what you <laughs> <have>. <laughs> i think so. in the video stuff is the hard thing at least for me because i'm usually one taking pictures of everybody else time yeah but you don't have to take videos of yourself either like if it's easier for you to to like jump in and do like videos like a house i haven't done it yet but i've seen like lots of people do it and i'm like that one's interesting like i want to start doing like take a video of just the house, the house. Or, or just like putting highlights of like these are fun facts that i i found mm -hmm. out that i thought were interesting like mm -hmm. that might be yeah because yeah. cool. yeah, i'm like i see because one of one of my facebook friends and she was my realtor back in california mm -hmm. she's always in front of the camera and this lady and she has so much energy it's just not even fair but <laughs> dang she's always videotaping herself I'm like, I just, 
I know. And it's yeah. bizarre because like I'm not not my thing. I'm not I wasn't <laughs> I'm more tech savvy now, but I taught myself a lot on YouTube. Like I knew nothing about TikTok and for some reason my husband is so against TikTok, but it's hilarious. But I like basically didn't do it really at all when it first came out, but I just recently got into it in the past six months and I didn't know anything about it. But if you go on TikTok and create an account, you can literally look up how to's on TikTok. Like how to do this on TikTok, how to grow followers, how to um tutorial for this dance. Like I literally will learn certain dances on TikTok <laughs> and there will be like a slow mo. So like I mean literally like I'm not even ashamed to say that. Like I'm just constantly, always constantly being your brain Yeah. So I mean that's scary and people are judgy and you just have to be like whatever gotta start somewhere. So my kids love it. They're like, mommy, I want to do So yeah, it's fine. I, I really enjoy social media. So that's that's how um, I get it. And the biggest, biggest thing with buyers, if I had to conclude it with something, is to remember to follow up. Because if you just do it one and done, like people aren't going to remember you. So if you have needs, make sure you're following up with them. And like, because when we were making our calls earlier, this one girl, um, I helped get a rental like a year ago. And it's like really hard in this market for her to get anything because she can't com compete with the over asking and stuff. And she was like, I wonder if like, the person that I'm leasing my house from would be okay with me buying this house. Like it would be a good starter home. And I was like, oh, that's a great idea. Well, I reached out to the, the landlord who's also a realtor here. And she was like, oh yeah, I would think about that. I would, that she's an awesome family. And she, she's like, I love you, I love her. Yeah, like I would totally do that. But Dallas, um, my client uh, went out of town and I'm like, she hasn't been real good about talking to the lender and stuff. But uh, so I've been following up like, hey, how have you been? Have you connected with Kristen? You know love to get this started for you. I do that like once a week. And she'll just kind of, she appreciates me reaching out. And even though she's really slow, it's kind of like, sometimes it takes a long time. Like I'm fixing a list of landing crumbs and it's like 13 acres. And I've been following up with them for a year. <laughs> they were walking from home time and it's just an interesting situation. And like the person that lives there doesn't own it, but she doesn't really want to move. And then the person that has to sell is for like money reasons for the family. And so it's just been a slow, like, you know, what do you need? Do you need a cleaning lady? Do you need a, a junk guy to help you declutter? Like over time, they've slowly been doing this and they're finally to the point that it took a year. <laughs> so sometimes it looks like, and you just want to kind of be real because um, people struggle on social media thinking like, oh, you're so, you're like so perfect. You have all these cool things. You've got all this going on. They don't realize like the work that you've had to put in to get that stuff. <laughs> Like a, a lot of time away from the family, a lot of follow up, a lot of remembering to do certain tasks. So, yeah, for sure. When you do phone time, do you have like a seller's packet, a buyer's packet, and a lease packet ready to go in case somebody walks in? No, but that's a good idea. I actually have one on my car. I have a buyer's console, and I have like um, T47s and seller's disclosures. So, like if I ever go door knock or sell by owners, I can just take those. Like, hey, you have a seller disclosure. Usually, they don't know what that is and they don't have it. So, you're coming from contributions, you know, giving them stuff, even though they may or may not use you, and following up with them. You could get the listing. But it's always good to be over prepared. I do have them saved on my computer. So, if someone comes in, I could just print it off. Um, but yeah, you always want to have that on hand for sure, especially your information about brokerage services. Because you that's my head, like, always start talking. Any other questions on Zoom? Sorry if I talk so fast. Thank y'all for giving me grace on my first class. Yeah, I had no idea it was your first class. You did so good. <laughs> yeah, like I hate being like, like by this, like, you know, you can get kind of boring following this. So that's why I try to remember. Well, it's the little things like the forms and the circle pictures or whatever. It's like that little stuff is not in here. Yeah, um, that's what I'm like, that's, that's the stuff that's super helpful and then I go back and I'm like, yeah. get all set up. Yeah, like, so behind, but they, they give you that little packet of like things to do in your first 60 days when you first start. No. So like, I remember getting one of those and I would just try to do right. one or two yeah. things a day. Or like even your Gary Keller, or not Gary Keller, your email from Scott Yeah. So like, I would just kind of knock out one thing at a time. And then I would do my Facebook business page and then I would work on this. And like, even now, like I'm, I'm only in the business two and a half years, but even now, I'll be like, okay, teach myself TikTok today. Um, I'll time block, you know, to make my first YouTube video or just like, cause if I don't do it, it won't happen. And that's the thing that for me, cause like 
So I didn't know I was a high C, but Jesse told me I am too. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, that's something that's overwhelming for me because I'm also hard to start. So I'm like, I want to know everything and start building my lists and building papers. Like, for example, that uh, PDF that you talked about that has all the information about the process. Mm -hmm. I'd like to do that first. My mom and my brother are not doing the complete opposite. They're like, jump in, jump in, jump in. And so <laughs> it's definitely been like a learning process of me being like, okay, let me jump in before I like, I'm fully prepared. Yeah. But, um, but uh, I totally lost my train of thought. Oh, the whole, it's for me, the, it's overwhelming the thought of hearing everybody talk about, like, these are all the processes I have in place. And I'm like, I have to get all these processes in place now, like right now. Mm -hmm. And so it's overwhelming thinking, like, how, what's my, like, how much grace can I give myself on, oh, I haven't done this yet, but I got to get to it, you know? And like, you have so many hours in the day, and like, mm -hmm. little by little, like, uh, go and like, you know, work through it. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's my, my overwhelming thing is, oh my God, all these people are doing all these things. How do I get there yeah. from where I'm at right now? Yeah, exactly. I, I was thinking of you yesterday because I know last week you'd asked one of the agents, do you give yourself time off to do things? And yesterday I actually I'm like, I'm gonna do my calls in the morning today. I've got to do laundry, I've got to do housework. <laughs> I felt guilty, but it wasn't like, that was me this working weekend. on this stuff yeah. and and yeah because yeah. last weekend i was like grinding and i was like oh my god okay and then this weekend i had a pretty like more relaxed weekend i was like oh no i'm not feeling good i need to do more <laughs> i just took one day and i was like i've got to do laundry yeah. stuff it was like yeah you got to give yourself grace you just have to have a schedule and then you actually have to implement so you the, the great thing about keller williams is they have all this training and come to all the training but also take it couple days to actually do the stuff that you're learning or you're just going to forget what you're learning along the way. So actually have an open house, actually do lead generation, actually have a buyer consultation, actually log into the command and set up your templates. So when you get the buyer consultation, you have something of value to get for them. Because um, that kind of takes a little bit of time to figure out, you know. It does. And that's that's where I find it's my biggest time suffer, sitting there trying to figure out the program, trying to make it the way I want it. And then suddenly I get pulled away to something else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's easy to do. And actually, I have to set boundaries for myself because I'm very OCD when it comes to housework and like, because yes. I work from home. I'm like, oh my God, there's dishes. I have to do the dishes. Like, I literally will not let myself do housework from a certain time period or else I'll get distracted and I won't be doing my legions. I'm going to do dishes and laundry. Yeah. So even if my kids are going, I'm like, oh my God, I can get all the stuff. Like, no, I need to focus on my work. So I know that's weird, but. I'm just going to stay in here and working in here because mm -hmm. then I don't see the dishes in the sink mm -hmm. or the laundry that you can move for the cat walking across the keyboard and here. Yep. <laughs> Did y'all have any questions or ahas on Zoom? I uh, know you've explained it very, very well. And I'm really excited to start putting this in motion and implementing what you've told me to my business. Awesome. Thank y'all. I really appreciate your time. I won't make us say the whole, um, new so we'll just if anyone else has any more ahas or questions let me know i have a question how do you uh because i i love tiktok and uh, that's something i i have posted a lot of things with just me and my kids mm -hmm. and out of one video it was just my kids and i uh i got like so many followers yeah and uh but i haven't started um doing videos related to real estate mm -hmm. um so have you mm -hmm. yeah how do you um, manage the the so on all my <laughs> on, all, on all my platforms i keep i keep it the same i'm realtor lauren swanson on facebook instagram and tiktok and so people can search me on there and i'll typically do them for like the other day i had a final inspection walkthrough and so i literally just did short little video of the living room short little video of the bathroom short little video like and then i just it literally puts it together for you and picks popular songs and i think that it just I just made a video just of that final inspection almost to closing just and like it has some house. cool little trendy music in the background mm -hmm. and people are seeing you be busy they're like oh dang you were just at an appointment oh now you're doing a final walker oh now you got a closing and and it's just like because i mean we're we're out there working hard but nobody knows that we are because we're not doing social media mm -hmm. so i just remember to document my hard work <laughs> basically so yeah thank y'all for playing Thank you. If you ever have any questions moving forward, just reach out to me, message me. Um, I'll have my phone number. Thank you. You're welcome.
I'll put my phone number in the chat if y'all need it. See you later. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Forget to do your note card. It doesn't make a difference. I do. I have to go buy me some. Yeah. Thank you. You're so welcome. That's nice seeing you. Yes, you. Get back you at two. Check your note cards. The note cards. Um, I got these from uh, Dirt Cheap. So you can get them from Walmart, Target. I just. Uh, these don't actually cost as much. Yeah, yeah, they're super like this is like 50 cents. Yeah. So I buy in the bulk and they're cheap. Do you customize the design? Or, uh, or is it just blank? I just handwrite them. Okay. Yeah, I handwrite them and send them in the mail. And you can do like, there's no card USA. You can do it digitally, but I just feel like this is more personal. Okay. And then you can hide it. You're welcome. You're welcome. Were you guys doing this too? No, I just realized what day it was. Okay. I got my calendar and stuff today. It's my favorite. Yeah, it is. That's <laughs> why so I'm like, it's not right stuff so anymore. Yeah, let's do that. I was coaching. That's what I had. I was coaching. Oh, yeah, that's great. That's that's all right. Right. Yeah. But, so I downloaded the Cozy app so I could try to share it with my husband and uh -huh. my daughter because I babysit my grandson mm -hmm. and she works in the hospital. So it's like, we need a calendar. Because otherwise, I'm stuck on this. Yeah. Both coaching and two. Take Tuesdays tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Got a wedding deal? Let's go. Right. It's on a calendar. If it's not an appointment, then we'll get you future. That's right. <laughs> Happy good afternoon. Oh, you too. Don't work too hard. That's what I always tell people. Don't work too hard. You have no idea. Right. Remember the rest. So you don't burn out. Because they're guilty. How sad is that? You feel guilty when you're doing laundry and housework. Mm -hmm. like, and it's hard to, I mean, kudos to y'all for coming here tonight and being consistent with the classes because, like, it was really helpful to me. I went to every single class. It is. And it, like I said, it's all the little nuggets. I mean, we could look at this and that's fine and it's great, mm -hmm. but it's the little real life stuff that you guys are actually using. Because everybody uses something different mm -hmm. and it's all stuff that I had no idea. Yeah, no, we're all learning. I mean, I'm up here almost two and a half years in business just trying to have some conversations as I can. That's that, and you know what? It's fabulous because it's really, it's very helpful. It yeah. really is. Good. So, yeah, because, yeah, a lot of people, I mean, this is very specific. They say, like, it only maybe only 20% of people mm -hmm. turn to business after their first year. And none of my, I had like 12 people in my last class that I've never been here anymore. Wow. Yeah. See, and I don't want to be that. Uh, yeah, you know. Yeah. Good idea. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Mark, this is Lauren Swanson calling you back on 7900 Stone Ridge.
Yes, so we got the professional photos done yesterday and my photographer told me that I would have them this morning. So I'm gonna follow up with them and see because I don't see them in my email yet. And so I'll probably upload those photos into MLS later today. And then I'll set up showing time. Um, you'll be able to schedule an appointment starting Wednesday. I think we're gonna start at 10 a.m., 10, 10 to seven on Wednesday. So we'll start at 10 a.m. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna actually set that up right now um, so I can get that going. I don't know if it will let me because it's still coming soon, but I'm gonna get it started. Oh, and yeah, the 21st, but they said that they get to have shown me that as late as 7, so, um, you know, you'll be, and I'll have overlapping showing available as well, so. It is pretty open because the uh, kitchen has, like, the bar top where it looks over into the living room. Um, the, the kitchen has some updates. It's not like granite countertop updates. It has granite look, and then it has um, distressed cabinets. It's got stained concrete floors, but they do have the pool and the extended covered patio. So it's open in like the living room, kitchen, dining room area, and then they have two separate living spaces. One of them's upstairs is like a separate living space, and then there's a, like a den off to the side. We call it a third living, and it actually has a half bath in there. So he's actually using it as a man cage. Um, and then it's got four bedrooms, two baths, two half baths, and it's like 30, 31 hundred square feet, I think. Absolutely, I already have your number saved um, under your name and that you called on the sign, so I'm going to follow up with y'all the day of if I don't already have a schedule for you. Okay, I appreciate it. Thank you have a good day. Bye. Um, I'm not sure myself.